Right, we should be live. Are you still there, Cole? Uh, yeah, I'm still lovely, here, mate. Lovely, yep, we should be live now. They should be both be live. I've not done the pre-roll or anything. Let me just reload the new chat. Sorry about that, uh, folks. Yeah, that's, that's what I was saying to you, but you had me muted. Do I need to load a new chat? But I'm yes, I'm going, now, going to do that now. Uh, okay, let's have a, a jiggle around. Let me just, sorry about that, folks. Uh, streaming issues. I've dropped it down to 1080p, so this might be a bit more chill that on my system let me open that and close that mm -hmm, and open mm -hmm. that and open task manager so i know what i'm doing do 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 oh i'm still at 70 odd percent that's weird mm. right there you go and, uh... Uh, up me audio just to make sure. Do, 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 do. Why is Streamlabs desktop at 60 odd percent? Sorry about this, folks. Don't know, mate. Technical shenanigans. Never mind. We'll we'll struggle on as best we can. Uh, Panzer says, yeah, we could hear both of you, but uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just we couldn't hear or see each other, mate, and it's difficult no. when you can't interact with each other. Um, what am I making, girl? Let me load the chat. Sorry about right. this, folks. We'll be back in a second doing stuff. We'll be back up and running as normal. Uh, I'm actually doing some painting. Yeah. Can get the chat up. Derek Jane says, who's playing silly buggers? <laughs> the only thing I'm worrying about is if it's like my stream lobs falling over all the time, then that's, and that kills communication between me and you. That's an issue, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay, why is there, a, there's an advert there. Okay, fine. What? How ironic! <laughs> the advert on my on my stream is an advert for Streamyard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Do 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 do. Just more reasons. Well, you have to... got that option if it goes peaked on. Yes, yeah, so just, just more reasons back. for me to save up and get a new PC or get my PC updated. Right there we go. Right, so hopefully we should be back now. Uh, let us know if it's sounding and looking. You're already painting. Sounding and looking okay. Um, not really sure why Streamlabs is using a massive amount. I'm not doing it at 1440p, I don't think. Let's just double check. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, video. Yeah, 1080p. Okay. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Uh, right, so hopefully you can all see us and hear us. Can you all see us and hear us? Okay. Yes, hopefully. Right, so anyway, let's carry on. I don't know. Technical shenanigans. Mm -hmm. So, if you remember last week, we had started the chipping. We had uh, done... I'll put myself full screen so people can see what we've done. Uh, we had started the chipping, so we'd done all the sponge chipping with the light Dawnstone colour. Uh, and then we started to go inside all those Dawnstone chips with the uh, Rhinox hide. Yeah. Uh, and we've done chunks of our tank. I've got the side left to do, and the turret and the weapons. Uh, I think you're about the same, aren't you, Cole? Uh, yeah, I'm just starting on me turret, mate. Yeah, so I'm going to finish this side, and then it's time for me turret and me weapons. So you can see that's the original Dawnstone chipping. I've got to fill all that in with the with the Rhinox hide, and that's what Colin's doing. Uh, do you want to show yours so people can see what you've done? Uh, yeah, hold up, mate. Yep. Let's just clean me brush off, because I've literally just put paint on. Gentlemen, clean your brushes. There you go. Got a bit of, bit of that going on. A little bit of whack a whack. You can see that. Uh, let's be light. Do, 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 do. Got a bit of that going on there. Mm -hmm. Bit on the front. Bit of chippage. It's iron can, as you can see. There you go. Chipping so, around the sides there, scratches and all of that going on. Lovely. Same underneath. Smashed it. And it looks really awesome as well. Now your focus has kicked in. Yep. It actually looks really awesome. <laughs> yeah, got some on his Iris, but not as much on his Iris because most of it is going to be underneath the front and around the base of the sides. See, now you're thinking with portals, you see. See, now you think see I have been paying Ooh. attention, and then there's a bit on the turret as well. Yeah. Mainly on the under edges of the turret. Yeah. Only bits I've got going across the top is where boots may have boots. walked over to drop in inside, but... Most of it's on the under edge there, where it's just been nice. all of that. Nice. So you're thinking with portals. You're thinking about the story of your chipping, which is good, which is awesome. It's... I'm very proud of you, soldier. I know. It's it's, <coughs> it's the same same with the frolic, isn't it? It's like we kind of got into it, didn't we? And yeah. 
Oh dear, I've got my sort of my orc palette going on. So that's what's happening. So hopefully you can now hear and see us both, folks. Yep. Now, of course. Uh, what's in the belly? What's on the bench? Yep. Of course, with my streamyard wanting to fall over all the time, there's no guarantee it'll stay working. But uh, well, we're not in streamyard; we're in streamlabs. No, it? streamlabs so... falls over. My streamlabs keeps crashing every now and then. Remember? I don't know why. Oh, really? Oh, you don't have much luck, do you? No, you know, it's, just, it's the thing where normally, if I'm streaming by myself, when we're using streamyard, it would everything would hang up in streamlabs, but it would carry on streaming and everything would keep working. Yeah. And the v, the meters wouldn't work, and then after about five minutes, it would fix itself. So it was never yeah. really a problem. It would it would always kill off me, me little stream deck there. Yeah. But uh, we'll find out. We'll find out. I think. So are you are you running all of this through your El Gatu capture card as well, or is that no, just that's, the game in your? No, that's just there? that's just that's just the thing that connects the the console to the the Xbox yeah, to the so computer. That's, that's not not claiming resources. No, no, no. Your system is literally the same processor that I've got. Yeah, so. it's clearly nonsense. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> I've got the nonsense filter added or something. I don't know. I just haven't got a graphics card. So. Yeah, I think that's where you're going yeah. wrong. You're using onboard graphics. Yeah, that's probably is... chewing up lots of things. That's much use as tits on fish. That well, is, yeah, I didn't need one when I got the computer built because it was purely it was built for drawing. It wasn't built for yeah. YouTube. It was before YouTube, you see. So yeah. I don't know why Streamlabs at, is at sixty-one percent, but I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Right. Anyway, it's not eighty percent. That's all I care about. I don't know. Uh, Mark that? Shellard says, you're upside down. No, wait, it's my tablet. <laughs> uh, Shellard. Darren Edmonds says, surely in the future they would have unchippable paint or self-painting vehicles. It's not just the future, though. It's the Warhammer 40k future, which means development of technology is absolutely heretical and they have to just use whatever they can find patterns to make. So, no. And also, they're producing these by the million, million, million. So, no. Cheap as chips, these things. Uh, so yes, we are basically um, painting, uh, finding a brush, we are painting Rhinox High, which is a rusty brown colour, into the middle of all the chips to suggest where the paint has broken off, flaked away, and the rusty metal underneath has been revealed. Revealed in all its revelation. You're revealing stuff. your rusty bottom, Colin, that's what you're doing. I am. Mm -hmm. Right, so I shall... I shall Get some. Of this. I've got some crap on me. I'm, oh, I've got crap on my little glasses lens. You really Gosh. are struggling. Today, I know. I'm having one of them days. Everything's a bit nonsense today. I don't. All going Pete Tong, isn't it, mate? Yeah. So anyway, how is everyone? I hope you're all well, viewers in Viewerland. Uh, bench and belly, of course. Like Colin said earlier, bench and belly. What's on your bench? What you're baking? Could be anything. Absolutely. Uh, and what's in your belly? What have you had for your dinner? Or what are you having for your dinner? Mm. Beverage of choice. Yes, beverage of choice. Beverages for all. Game and Grub, you're doing Game and Grub as well? Uh, no, we're not gaming, are we? No, yeah, I know, but do you want to throw it in there just for the sake of it, in case someone might be gaming whilst watching us? Too, yeah, that's true. I suppose it gives us some conversation, doesn't it? Yeah, go on then. Game and Grub, what are you playing? What video game of, or game of any kind of your choice is the favourite at the minute? And we've done the Grub one, I suppose, with Bench and Belly, but yes, good call. Darren Edmonds says, what about coloured metal? No. It's about... The funny, the funny thing with chipping is... It's about making things look the way you think they're supposed to look. Um, what I mean by this is a U-boat. German U-boats are a perfect example of this. Uh, in World War II, German U-boats often had either a red or a white primer coat underneath the paint. Mm. Um, but it wasn't very good. And so in reality, what you would see on a U-boat... When it's been out at sea for like six months on a on a on a mission on a tour, you'd come back and you'd see, especially on like the the conning tower, you'd see these dirty, massive, great big white speckles and chips everywhere. It'd be like it'd be like somebody like just threw confetti at it, because mm. all the uh, all the paint had been worn off and the the white primer underneath was showing up. Yeah, uh, and sometimes of course. Uh, it was the case that if they'd been given the red primer, you'd have red chips everywhere. And some of them would be rusty. They'd be rust everywhere as well. But when you saw the primer on the U-boat, it would be either your chips would either be red or white. And that was actually the way it was. That would be if you painted your U-boat with red paint chips. So you're painting this kind of German grey, but with bright red paint chips, whole red paint chips. You would be technically accurate. But everybody who looked at your model U-boat would go, 
what's with all the red spots everywhere yeah because it doesn't make any sense in a lot of ways it's not what your brain expects to see so with chipping there's accuracy so if you make your u-boat and you do these bright red chips you can do white chips and get away with it but if you do bright red chips everywhere the historical purists who don't understand about u-boats would be like ah you've reproduced that accurately well done very good but that's like about six people in your entire life that would ever say that yeah everybody else in the world would be like dude it looks great apart from the really weird dumbass red chips you put everywhere what's that all about why have you done a polka dot tank yeah yeah so the trick with model making is sometimes you have to decide between accuracy or what it makes sense and with metal vehicles you can do like shiny chips like silver chips especially if you're doing like world war ii aircraft the japanese aircraft they were they were a lot of them weren't prime they were made in a hurry so they were just like mm. built painted in green whatever green color they used and then thrown out of the factory and uh, you see a lot of chipping on Japanese World War II aircraft where it's all metal, silver chips. But, you know, on an aircraft, you wouldn't have as many rusty chips because, you know, the, the, the World War II aircraft, but they don't last that long and they're well-maintained. But for things like tanks and stuff, it doesn't take long for the metal on a tank to get rusty. No. Uh, We've only got a look at that on the news at the moment with the conflict in Ukraine. Yeah see a couple of russian tanks there might have only been parked there a couple of weeks and they're just glowing and, rusty yeah. color yeah that's the first thing that's one of the things that struck me when i was looking at some of the footage from ukraine is those tanks have only just been taken out and they're already just completely rust colored yeah, it's like a load of old pig iron in it yeah. there. it's like really so and and keep in mind that these these in in the fiction of 40k these tanks could be hundreds or even thousands of years old yeah so you know lehman rust tanks have been around for a good don't know 10,000 years eight nine ten thousand years because the, the imperium doesn't improve its technology they only they only make what is available to make when they find a pattern to make something that is forbidden to in to develop new technology um so tank could been wandering the wastelands for 10 millennia he was a tank no in reality Along in the darkness one Time. a week from retirement now, in reality, of course, Lehman Rust tanks wouldn't last that long because the Astra Militarum and the Imperial Guard are just cannon fodder. That's why the, the, the ethic of Imperial Guard is pile them high and just defeat the enemy with numbers rather than actual quality. So they're not high quality tanks anyway. They're mass produced and made quickly. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah, it's one of those things you, you sometimes have to play to with any kind of weathering you have to play to this is realistic but people won't understand and it looks like i've done a bad job so you have to play to the to the what you people what what looks realistic rather than what actually is realistic so for example if this was say a green tank you could do rusty chips or you could do these kind of this kind of german gray color as your chips and that would just suggest the the metal underneath the green paint is just dull metal if you didn't want to do rust you could do a dark gray color instead of rusty color but if you if your tank's german gray and you're painting the chips german gray, yeah that's not gonna that's just not gonna work at all so and we need something that contrasts with the gray but so we use the, the light gray to suggest where the paint's been chipped but not chipped down to the metal so it's just the clean paint it's been stressed and then the, the rust color is for the metal because it's got to, it's got to look like something and you have to really just kind of give people limited amount of guesses i suppose if that all makes sense yeah makes 100 percent. yeah it, it it is kind of limiting sometimes based on whatever color your vehicle is it's like you know if you're doing a desert vehicle are you going to have rusty chips is it going to rust in the desert and it's like, well, it may well be that by the time the tank gets to the desert, it's, it was built with rusty metal anyway, so... But I would have thought that there would be shiny metal as well, where the wind and the sand has been almost abraded in the surface. So yeah. you would have some rusty chips, but you'd have a lighter rust with perhaps 
where it looks like it's been sandblasted, you're going to have that sheen, aren't you, on yeah. the edges and things where the yeah. sand has been blown over the surface. Well, that's what we're going to try and reproduce because on, on this kind of vehicle, where it's not a desert vehicle, uh, we're going to do we're doing these rusty chips here. Uh, we'll have different colours because you'll have different stages of rust. This is this is dark brown, so this is old rust. This is oxidation that's been gone on for a while. Uh, we will have later on some some you know oil paint stuff we'll do and or whatever. We'll do some of the light rusting where you have a lighter colour rust, which is fresher rust. And then we'll also have at the very end one of the last things you can do on a tank is uh, your graphite graphite pencil. Yeah, graphite pencil, or graphite layer where you're suggesting, like you say, it's, it's basically the burnished metal. It's where rusty metal exposed to the air will go, you know, metal exposed to the air will go rusty. But if it's constantly being rubbed and touched like a handrail, then it might not go rusty because the hand, you know, the, the, the constant touching of it is just, is polishing it, it's buffing it. Yeah. And it's, it's getting rid of any water. So that's why, you know, you look at handrails in a park or something or on a bridge, Sort of metal handrails you'll have some of a lot of them will just be like a dull gray metal color or rusty but then you'll have these areas where everybody puts the hand and it's all kind of shiny and, mm. and, and nice so there you go so there are compromises a good, to... a good way of seeing uh our stuff works is just go down the local park yeah where, like say so you've got plenty of railings and things like that yeah look at the monkey bars and things where the kids play yeah. and you can Outside tell side barriers that's another good one yeah, oh yeah, then. I mean, I, there's one near me that I think of every time I have this conversation. It's like a, you, you run down this little path in a park and at the end of it there's like a, just a, a giant, basically a giant staple sticking out the ground. Yeah. To yeah, stop you running yeah. out into the road. And it's just like a grey metal colour, but it's got shiny bits. And... Yeah, we get it where the skateboarders, they jump their boards and run it along the poles. You end up with like a pinstripe down each side. It's yeah. beautiful to look at. Yeah. And then the skateboarder falls off and knocks his bollies on the railing and that's even more beautiful to look at. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's schadenfreude runs strong with skateboarders. <coughs> right, let's have a look at chat. Uh, Max McGinn says, uh, la, la, la. is it me or just this Collins feed occasionally freezing? It may well be. Again, it's, it'll be beyond our control, though. It's probably either down to me or uh, the, the, the camera sharing setup. Um, Jeff likes it. I've just come off the back of a Sunday show and it run well on the frolic. It's got yeah. to be them. So it's only chopping us for color stream. It down. It's down to me. Uh, Jeff Light says hi, Fox Colin. Everyone in chat and Space Hamsters at eight says hi, everyone. Welcome to both of you. Big hugs. Uh, Paul DiTomaso says white cheddar craft dinner and Pepsi Zero Halloween build. Cool. Max McGinn says belly Sunday roast bangers roasty potatoes parsnips broccoli and all veg goodness and gravy ben Ooh. bench I don't care now <laughs> after that <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, yeah he says bench painting yellow black chevrons on the plastic Sikaran battle tank for iron warriors oh nice I must get a Sikaran tank uh, McLeish burps and says apologies belly pepperami sticks tuna and sweet corn sandwich egg mayo sandwich three mugs of coffee two cans of monster dinner will be burgers and chips game quake one mods why are you shouting it's all in capitals you're shouting for some reason uh dave you can yeah model maker dave's workshops in dave's in hey dave welcome welcome hello mate hello buddy uh darren edmund says i do world war ii reenacting when you look at 1940s equipment it looks a mess but you have to realize that in 1940 it was probably only a few weeks old it's hard to know how far to go with weathering absolutely absolutely i mean you know most like small arms like rifles and guns <clears throat> they don't look horrible They're, they've got that kind of blue black steel look but they'll have some shiny edges where they've been handled but it still takes a little while for that to develop so you know, but these these kind of things, these are hundreds of years old, these tanks, if they've survived. But they are very cheap as well. Uh, hello, Princess Fox, says Dave. Hello, Dave. Okay. Says hello to you as well. Says hello, Colin. Uh, Max says, the Malkador tanks became obsolete when the Lehman Rust stock came at STC came along, the blueprints. However, Belisarius call us plot armour, inventing new things for the Imperium. Exactly. So the tanks they had in the... This is for your benefit, Cole. The tanks they had in the Horus Heresy, 10,000 years before... Warhammer 40k uh, yeah. became obsolete when these came out, and the Bane oh, Blade. Right. The Bane Blade was still around before 40k started. So, so Lehman Russ has been around for 10,000 years, basically. Uh, Paul De Tomaso says, "Lol, he said rubbing and touching it. You should always be rubbing it and touching it. Always." Uh, Dave says, "Belly was slow cooked curry." Oh. 
and Bench is adding kits to my scalemate's stash. Now, Good man. Now, see, hello, Sarah Jane, by the way. I have noticed that you're there. Hello, big hugs. Um, you made me do something terrible today. Uh, I've had a lot of mate requests coming through since the Sunday show. I think all the blokes and the women in the community at the moment are all on, all on scale mates that had in their stash. Yeah. See, I, I've, I've known what scale mates is for a long time, but I only know it as that place you go when you want to find out if the kit you've got is the latest version or an early one. Yeah. I didn't know there was a whole thing there for doing a stash. Yes. So when you basically put... a stash manager and it's brilliant. I yeah. I shall let you explain. There you go. Yeah, I use it all the time. Um because at the touch of a button you can see no matter where you are, whether you've got a kit. I mean my missus uses it because where she's out and about, instead of her ringing me up going, Have you got that kit? She can go straight online, log into my scale mates yeah. and, and see. So yeah. It works. Obviously, if you're one of them blokes that is hiding from your wife what you've got in your stash, then you might not want to give her a link for it. But yeah. Yeah, and it's just an easy way. Uh, you know, you can you can see your mate's stash. You know, I I use it a lot for if I've got a duplicate. You can trade kits as well. Hmm. I didn't even know the stash thing was. I thought it was just literally a website where you see the history oh, of the kit. Oh, you, yeah. you get your stash, you get your completed kits. You could have it where you've got kits that you've started and then you print it all out. You can print it all out as a CSV file mm -hmm. or save it as a PDF on your desktop and mm. email it to people. There you go. Especially when you're coming up where people go, oh, is there any kits you want? We'll go and have a look at my wish list. Mm. When, when oh, you say I'll email it, you, you mean email it to people who are expecting it, not just email it to randos on the street kind of thing. Hi, uh, my no, name's Fox. No, email, email, what? A, 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 oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I don't need to do that. Uh, you might want to unhide that, mate. I pressed the wrong side of the thing there because I switched. Andy what? McLeish. I can't... What? Oh, I Andy oh. McLeish's message. Do you want to enable it? I might have uh, even it I forgot the option to unhide it. Oh, you should have. It's your bloody stream. <laughs> it's uh, your YouTube. I've, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, three dots. Uh, not got the option to hide, unhide it. That's weird. Andy, can you put that comment again? I'm only on iPad, so maybe I don't get the option on iPad. Uh, he says, I was in cats, so your blind ass old man eyes would see it. <laughs> yeah, fair play. Uh, I don't oh, seem to be able to oh, hide that on iPad, yeah. so no worries. That's weird. I'll copy and paste it back in. It's gone in under my name. There you go. There you go. Yeah, I can't thing it because it's your string, mate. But yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, Sarah my Jane. bad, Andy. Uh, sorry, mate. I just twitched as I went to show your message. Sarah Jane says, "Took your time, Fox. Side. You clown." Hey, I was I was responding to a question, <laughs> and and I was also recovering uh, from having stop, to restart. Stop trying to get out of it because you're only going to make things worse. I just get out of nothing. the fact that you've been told off and accepted. I'm not a clown. Uh, I don't even have big feet. Yes, Aaron Edmonds, bench, uh, nothing at the moment. Belly, roast beef, spuds, Brussels sprouts, parsnips, Yorkshire pud, and war thunder on the pizza. Ooh. Yeah, so basically when Festa showed up, we was showing scale mates on, his, on the stream earlier. I was sat there and I was like, oh, crap. Because now I'm going to I'm gonna have to go and set up an account because it's... In the same way that I use the Games Workshop's paint app just as a as a, a I like a list of what paints I've got, yeah. so that when I'm in the shop, I know do I need to buy this paint? No, because I've already got it. Okay, yeah. brilliant. That's it. Yeah. So I saw it and I'm like, oh crap! Because now I'm going to have to oh, I'm going to have to go yeah. and set up an account. And then once I've done that, I know my next thing in this is to spend a whole day just shut away in my spare bedroom, going through my stash and. and Catalog it and all, yeah. and that's just. Oh. Do you know you can also add your paint, your books, anything like I that? Adding my paint. I'm, I'm not adding my paint again. That's on the that's on the yeah. Citadel app, and that's the best way it stays. Yeah, I've decided not to do that side of it. It's like, yeah, that will be an all day job. So I'm like, oh, I know I'm going to waste a whole day now doing that. Yeah, it's all my fault. I accept yes. all responsibility. It's completely your fault. You ne'er do well. So I set up an account, and uh, while I was watching your stream. And I was like, right, I shall add. The first two things I tried to add weren't on the database at all. I'm like, oh, brilliant. This is a good start, isn't it? Thanks. Uh, I tried you can to add, add your own custom entry, though, don't you? 
Yeah, well, I tried to add the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness set. It wasn't there. So I tried to add something else, and it wasn't there. But bizarrely, it didn't add those two Games Workshop kits that are freely available. But I was able to add my early 90s vinyl AMT Odo. 112 scale Odo. <laughs> yeah, that'll be in there, yeah. So that's the first one on there is my big 112 scale Odo that I must get around to doing at some point. I'm impressed. But it didn't have the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness set, which is like, really? Or my Ossiarch Bone Reapers that Mama Fox got me for Christmas last year for my birthday. Poor old, poor old Dave's Sunday afternoon's been ruined now because he's like, uh, yeah, he's now in the throes of putting it on. He's done well. I'm proud of him. He's... He's finally, after one year of me berating him, finally put up his picture. Uh, he's now put nine kits on there. I'm like, good man. He's learning. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be an afternoon destroyed now at some point. <laughs> I get on with your chipping, dude. All right, mate. I'm just giggling because the amount of people that I'm having to take responsibility for. for <laughs> yeah. Time. They well, got on Scalemates today. I think there's a lot of people that didn't know that was something that Scalemates did. Like I say, we've all heard of it because it's like people will send you like, what's that kit? And they'll send you a link so you can see all the history of the kit. And yeah. especially people that are doing things like buying, say, the the perfect grade Millennium Falcon or the old Fire Molds Millennium Falcon because you, you never yeah. know which version you've got. And you end well, up you going to Scalemates. You can get the detail upsets as well. Things yeah. like your, your de decals that you had for it and mm -hmm. things like that. You can list all of them. It's like the bikes I've got. Some have got the aftermarket resin or photo etch bits. You can add all of that as well. So, mm. so I think it's a, surprising. So I, th I think a lot of people know it exists. They just didn't know it was like you, you could have a profile and do stuff like that, which is interesting. So, yeah. It's, I, it, it's, uh, it's actually really therapeutic sitting there, keying it all in. I did mine in blocks of 10 when I'd done it. Oh, yeah. I don't, like you say, the kit number goes in, bang, add to your stash. But then you would, once you loaded it and went in, you could then think, oh, I didn't realize there was an aftermarket, I don't know, metal set of tracks or a metal barrel or so what you're saying photo etch parts. And it just lets you see all the bits and pieces that you might not have been aware of. So you, you make, you can get. you're making it sound like an even worse decision to set up an account and a, a stash list there because that's getting you to spend even more money. You can add Forge World as well. No. You can have a Forge World wish list. No. Ooh. Yes, I know. Just, just you know, hit that button. You know you want to. These aren't plus points. These are downsides. Forge World. You know you want to. Well, you'll be going back to Forge World before I do. Because you, oh, you, you, you have, because you haven't got the Orc uh, Blaster Killer Tank thing. Or the... Or the um, the truck thing that I've got that's just a truck with a flatbed and which is basically just a flatbed with wheels that I put the cannon on the back of. Can't remember what it's called now. Yeah, I've got a flatbed truck with wheels on not on building, innit? Mm-hmm. But you haven't got the kill burster cannon tank. No, yeah. I know. You're just trying to get me to go to bloody forge world. I don't know what you're I don't doing. need to I force you. What. I don't need to get you to go anywhere. You just go above your own volition. Must be your neck, you mean it can matter. Uh, you see that lot, that that white that little white bar at the top of the uh, the browser window. Mm -hmm. Just type in "kill burst attack." Or, no. Yeah. Got me hands full. Hands full, my bum. Uh, let's have a look. Hi, Fox and Colin says EC Idaho. EC Idaho is in. Welcome to you, my friend. Hello, mate. EC Idaho. How are you doing, mate? Mm -hmm. Um. Ba -do -ba -do. Ironically, when uh, when Andy McLeish says he was in caps and my blind ass old admires would see it, he could have just put at model making guru, and I absolutely would have seen his comment. Putting things in all caps doesn't really help me see a comment. Just just so you know. You're just being picky now. I am. You? I am being picky. You're in one of your picky moods, aren't you, dear? <clears throat> I'm not in a picky mood. Have you watched any more Bluey yet? No. Still just got the first episode down, yeah? I've done the first episode. I am uh, now back, so, yeah. on, back on the house. I was watching the Moto GP overnight from Aussies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what a race. Oh, mate. If you don't understand motorcycles and nope. cars, watch the Moto GP back, mate. You'll be getting your knee down in your chair on the e-model stream. I know you would. No, because it's, it's like... To me, it's like saying... I don't know. It's, it's it's just it doesn't stir any interest in me at all. Racing and sport is like, eh. 
Be very careful because Sarah Jane is in the chat and you will be punished severely. No, I understand that other people like it. I'm not looking, I'm not saying the sport is bad. I'm saying for me, sport of any kind just holds no interest at all because I'm not sporty at all. I'm not saying the sport is bad in itself. I understand why people like things like motorsport and stuff. But it just doesn't hold any any fascination for me. I just I just I get bored. My best friend Nikki Bless her, she was into uh, Formula One massively. She was the one that knew the guys at um, McLaren and did art, oh, right. did yeah. art for them yeah. and stuff and knew Uncle Ron. And she'd done a load of artwork for them, so they had a little exhibition at the McLaren Centre. Yeah. It was a proper like black tie event. Uh, and she was allowed to take a plus one, because <clears throat> it was her artwork, but yeah. she was. She said, you know, bring a plus one, so she took me. And I was like, <laughs> Afterwards, I was like, yes, "Why did you, you know? You like your boyfriend is into Formula One as much as you are, and why did you take me?" And she's like, "I don't know." I just the person with the least amount of interest, folks, in motorsport and cars, and she goes to McLaren and does car part works. Yeah, but it's like least interest. <laughs> but it's like of all the people to get access to McLaren and. All the access to the parts that the public don't get access to. Like I was in the super secret rooms where you don't actually, if you're a member of the public, you you can't see through the frosty glass. Oh uh, yeah, the R and D stuff. Yeah. yeah, I was in there. I was looking at things, and it all went over your head. Didn't I know. But she was. She says to me. She says it's really funny that like, you know, so few people get to see what's in this room, and you're just seeing it crap. And you haven't got a clue what you look at. I'm like, yep, yeah, no idea. <laughs> and you know, walking around the factory and. Having having really bad volivant with Ron. They put some food on and it was like really cheap volivant. I was like, wow, these are terrible. <laughs> yeah, he's catching charisma, isn't he, Ron? Yeah. And uh right. and I, I took um I took many, many photographs of all the cars at McLaren. All of them. Um I do have them all on my personal Facebook profile, but I I'll have to see if I can figure out some way to get them somewhere else. I haven't yeah. Because I don't share my nice. public profile, so... No, it's a nice place, the technology's sort of thing. Up. But even though I have no interest in cars and stuff, I can appreciate cars. So I did, I did appreciate... I was grateful, and I, I did have fun, and I enjoyed it. And the cars there are fantastic. It's a gorgeous place. Gorgeous cars. But yeah. I just don't... Any kind of sport, not just motors, but any kind of sport at all, it's yeah. like... I, eh, I not... didn't get blubby, blubby when I was there. But... Yeah. I kind of had an inner, inner sense of poignancy when I was stood next to Senna's car because he was me racing idol when, yeah. when he got killed. It was tragic. Yeah, see, I can understand that and I can appreciate people that have that, those thoughts. Yeah, it was one of them, you know. It was, oh, you know, such an iconic yeah. machine. And it just got you thinking, you know, and you, what a tragic loss. But... Mm -hmm. So it's really it's really just that I don't, I don't, I don't mock sport and motorsport and stuff I, I can fully appreciate you know why people like it and I, I don't see it as anything rubbish or anything but it's just it's not my cup of tea it doesn't do anything for me oh i mean what don't help me is my first induction was the barry sheen kenny roberts motorcycle race at silverstone mm. where murray walker said oh look he's waving at baron at kenny roberts and he wasn't he was flicking him the v's yeah. and and that was my introduction and i just had this overwhelming memory of the smell of two-stroke and the loud noise mm. and the, uh, the excitement of a man on a motorcycle because it's man and machine against mother nature. Yeah. Right? That's that's what I love about motorcycles. That kind of primal. Yeah, yeah, you don't get that in the car because, yeah, you're in a nice warm, caged-off environment with the windows <laughs> shut, whereas on a bike it's just you on the road. And it, mm. it it's a very exhilarating feeling. I can't quite put it into words, but no. it's like an aphrodisiac almost. Yeah. It's, oh, I, can, I can, yeah. I, 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 so, in a lot of ways, yeah. I can, I can understand that. And I can, I can yeah. almost, you know, I fully understand why people yeah. like that. Doesn't do anything for me, like. No, that's it. But it's just one of them. And that's what I grew up with. And then we used to go down to Wimbledon Speedway. When that was on, because mm -hmm. you know Wimbledon, when we moved over to Streatham, weren't that far away. Like, so you'd go to Wimbledon Stadium, you'd do the dogs. When World of Sport was down there for the old dogs, you'd yep. do the uh, banger racing. You'd have the um, speedway on. So it used to be a bloody good, good laugh. When know? I was a so, kid, I used to like the banger racing just because it was violent and crashes. 
And when, exactly. they, and when they started in the 80s, when they started doing banger racing, but the bangers had caravans on the back. Yes. That was yes. like, oh, world of sport. That was great. Uh, but yeah, no, I was, I was just... It's a bit like... It's like if you said to me, do you want to watch this, this program about crochet? Well, no, I don't have any interest in crochet. Ah, that's right. Yeah, so... I don't, I don't, I don't judge anyone for liking something that I don't like. Uh, everyone has their different yeah. interests, but I think, I think it was something he was on about in one of the streams where you, you didn't quite get it, and that's where it worked for me. It was just that thrill. I mean, yeah. if, if I was, you know, chronic fucking depressive at the end of the day, you know, you know, and so if I was like that, I would go out on the bike, just me on the bike in the middle of the countryside. <laughs> mm. Hunging down a windy country road, getting me knee and me elbow down. And you just lost yourself in that experience. Yeah. And it would almost just like it in the reset button. It's a bizarre thing, but you have to, you know, that's what I did. Yeah, I, th I think I was saying that I didn't understand motor. I was kind of jokingly saying it, but I didn't understand motorbikes. Why would you want a motorbike mm. when you can have a nice, comfy car that's warm? And, and but I think yeah. that the reason for that, though, is purely because. I see cars as a method to get from A to B, and that's it. I mean, I, I I I sit and drool over a '70s muscle cars. Don't get me wrong, yeah, because they're gorgeous and they're amazing. Mm. But I'm not interested in power or anything like that or the engine. It's just the look and the style. So, yeah, to me, a car that I'm actually driving is just a car that I'm driving to get from A to B. I don't I don't have that that passion oh, yeah. behind it. I rode my motorbike for pleasure. Mm. You know, yeah. it is. It's just one of them. It's in you. Mm. Um, Everybody I likes miss different it things. terribly. Mm. You know, I, I would love to be able to to ride again and would be you... in control of the machine, but I just haven't got that leg brain coordination. And Brian, a good friend of mine, he bought a Busa a couple of years ago and he came and got me. Yeah. And, and took me out pillion on the Busa. And what he did is he put a ratchet strap round his waist and mine and strapped us together. I was going to say, I was going to say, could you still pillion it and like. Yeah, and then gunned it down my old favourite road, oh. the Alton Road. And that was as near as damn it as I, I could experience that rush again. Could you still do that now? Do you think? Yeah, I'd still do it now. If you can, yeah, if there's a way to, if there's a way that you can do it safely, as long as you, as long as you're locked in place. Oh yeah, he said he'll come and get me again and, and yeah. take me back down. So you know, it's not an issue. But that's the nearest I can get to it. Yeah, but you've still got access to that. So yeah, absolutely. It's, so it's it's weird. It's it's one of those things. Is some people like some things, some people don't. It's like I can, I can appreciate old cars purely on an aesthetic level, whilst having mm. no interest at all in engines and power and speed and racing. It's like. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah the, but I'm the... cars of that era were designed by blokes with slide rules, and yeah. you got exquisite, beautiful designs that yeah. you wouldn't necessarily get now because it's all computerized. Well, it's all, it's also um Ferrero and and all of that. And my brother, my brother worked at Ford for a long time, and he was like, "Yeah, when you get your car designs now, it's brand loyalty. They're just trying to not suddenly throw anything at you that makes you go to another competitor, so they have to keep them all kind of not that much interesting." Yeah. Apart from people like Renault and Peugeot, where they just design whatever throws the, the wall and sticks. I mean, but then you they're think about it. In the modern world, would you have got the E-Type? You know, would you have had the AC Cobra? Yeah. You know, no. them sort of cars. I don't think you would have. No, because even if you look at modern supercars, like... OK, you've got the Veyron, which looks a bit, a bit funky. But mm. even modern supercars, they're like... Eh. Well, yeah, they're jelly moulds, isn't they? They're all becoming very similar, yeah. and it's for me, it's killed it. There's no, there's not that aesthetic. There's no aesthetic passion anymore. There's just the performance and the safety. Well, safety obviously is, it makes it makes perfect sense, but it seems to me the aesthetic passion has been toned down a bit. It's not, it's not quite as wild as it used to be, and that's the same with anything. I think nowadays. Are we being old men and shouting at the clouds again? Oh, uh, yeah. Andy McLeish says you need one of those adapted trite behemoths. Yeah, I used to have one, mate. I used to have a Phoenix trite that I had. But when I lost that ability, I mean, I stopped riding long before I had my Monza converted to hand controls. Mm. Um, but, yeah. I suppose the, is meant... the issue for you is not staying on the bike. It's controlling the bike. Um, well, I lost... I lost that sensation of feeling the bike under me. Yeah. 
and those that ride will know exactly what I yeah. mean. When you go into a corner at, I don't know, 55, 60 degree lean angle, you need to feel that bike under your tailbone. Yeah, you need to know. You need to know what the bike's doing so you can work with it. You need it to and... know it so that if you're beginning to get chatter or you're feeling the bike's trying to slip out, for, you can you can adapt. Well, I didn't have that sensation anymore due to the damage of the nerves in my lower back and upper legs. Yeah. So, for me, that was quite fundamentally key, and also the soles of my feet, feeling the foot pegs through your boots. I had lost that had diminished. So, for me, that's key things that you need to feel um, yeah. it was the same with driving the car i my anti-coordination and reflex speeds have begun to diminish therefore if i was driving down the street and ma ma and pa kettle came out with their three-year-old kid and he run ahead of them yeah my reaction times were becoming diminished yeah and i had it in my head that i wouldn't be out of stop in time now for me having a conscience that told me that it was time to stop yeah so for them reasons, you know, you yeah. make that decision, don't you? Yeah, well, it's no longer safe, practicable. There's nothing you can do, really. Yeah. I miss it. Don't get me wrong. You know, I've still got the Monza up on Gojax in the garage yeah. because in my mind, I hope to drive it again one day. Yeah. When in reality, deep down. You know, yeah. Well, it's like, it's like me with Mama Fox. Mama Fox has got essential tremors, which means, you know, handshake and stuff. Yeah. So it's difficult to do a lot of things that we take for granted. Um, and I often think to myself, you know, I may not, it may not happen to me, but if I, if I've inherited that, then there will yeah. come a time when I can't do any of this anymore because I won't be able to, you know, hold the paintbrush, never mind paint exactly. something. So, you know, I, I'd know that it may, I say it may never happen. It might never happen at all, but it yeah, might be. But you, you you're prepared for it put yeah it that way. i mean you know oh, if that time don't ever... get me yeah go on go on don't get me wrong nothing fully prepares you for no. it you know when i i got my ms diagnosis i knew something weren't right mm. and then you have that initial five minutes of oh didn't expect that and then you're like okay it's what it is. It ain't going to go away. And then it was like, right, what do I need to do to live with this condition? And yeah. what adaptations do I need to make? And that, for me, is an approach that works for me. Mm. Well, I mean, that's that's um, why I do things like... Uh, that's one of the reasons why I do things like the video game content on my channel. Because I know if at some point I can no longer do the painting model stuff. Not that I've done it for a long time anyway. But if at some point I'm no longer physically able to, you know, build or paint at least i've got the option of something else i can do on the channel it's not like my life's over there you go done exactly that's why we was chatting about gaming wasn't it mm. was basically trying to prep for that time when i have to step back from the model making yep. and look at other ways of putting content on the channel because i know it'll get me in the end yeah. i know that um but i'm still going to fight between now and then to, to prolong it as long as possible yep. but I have noticed things that I could once do without thinking about it are now monumentally a chore. Yeah. Just how it is. And I mean... That side of it can bug you. I mean, the, 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 I suppose the one advantage with the stuff we're doing here, like the model making, the painting, is that to a certain degree for a while, you'll be able to just adapt your painting style to yes. <clears throat> whatever limitations you've got. So it may be that, yeah. you know towards the end of your, your painting career and your model making career you might be painting like nice flat colors and lots of big big flat shapes and nothing too detailed but you know what exactly. you know what mondrian painted squares yeah it's if you look at it as a, a form of art it's not yeah. about being realistic if you end up just painting things in splashes yeah. of color and stuff it's still you know you're still having fun with it yeah. so I need to blow my nose. I'm going to mute my microphone for a second. Exactly. You know, I was chatting with Dave earlier on. He was asking how things, you know, and I said about me legs. I said, at the end of the day, my philosophy is, is I build, I build model kits with my hands, not my feet. Mm. So if the legs do go, it's like, yeah, all right, it's a shame, but it's not for me the end of the world. It may sound really bizarre that I'm flippant. I don't mean it that way. Mm. But I'm that pragmatic. You know me really well, Fox, and you know how I think. It's like I'm a realist. Yeah. Oh, well, it's done now. I think I can do about it. Uh, what are we going to do next? Yeah, I'm and the that's same. It. I'm the same. On. 
Uh, Sarah Jane says, you know, and I was saying about me going to, to um, McLaren. Yes. Sarah Jane says, I got asked last year to see a guy who makes the moulds for Warhammer stuff. I obviously turned it down as it's crap. True story. Yeah. <laughs> Bless her. Mm. And knowing Sarah Jane? Yeah, she will it off. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, can I get this off the stand? Hang on, let me show you something. I shall show you something. Yeah. It's got a lot it's of dust on it. Friendly, I hope. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of dust on it. Oh, got a lot of dust on it. There you go. That's my guest. That. My guest uh, thing from McLaren. Solid oh, plastic. Nice it's proper plastic. I'm not sure you're supposed to keep them, but I've still got it. I might keep it. I no, Well, I think because we, we went to the event, what we did was we came away with a big booklet. We came away with a, a photograph, but we got there, and after about three or four hours, we were, we were going away again. They'd managed to get this photograph they'd taken of everybody at the start and also and, and put it in this block of resin. Yeah. This block of acrylic. Oh. Uh, from out of nowhere, Super Chat, says uh, Jeff. Jeff, big hugs. Thank you very much, Jeff. That's very kind of you. Super Chat, $10 there. there big you hugs go. to you, my You're friend. Happy now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're helping to keep me alive, literally, because it buys food and drinks and stuff. Yes, thank you for that, Jeff. You're very kind. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, they, they, within about three hours, they'd taken like 30 or 40 copies of this photograph they'd taken and, and splonked it in a big chunk of resin. Yeah. Like a big, thick, kind of like acrylic resin, whatever it was. So I've got this photograph of all of us stood there around one of the cars and we all came away with our little lanyards, which I'm sure you're not supposed to normally have, but they didn't ask us to give them back. So, yeah. That was my. So I, I'm, I'm glad I went, even though I'm not into cars and not into racing. I'm glad I went because I can appreciate cars, and I did get a shed load of photographs. Oh, yes. And I was, I was glad to accompany my friend in her moment of pride, you know, because you know, it was a bit of an achievement for her. She was, she was really proud of her work. So I got to accompany my friend. Swig exactly. of water. Mm. It's a nice day out, I know. Yeah, and it's one of those things that I'd never get the chance to do it again. So I think when life. When life presents you with an option to do something, whether you want to do it or not, and it's the only chance you'll ever get, and it's something cool, even if you're not into mm. it, you should take it anyway. Yeah. Because even if you don't, even if you're not into that thing, at least you can tell other people, and they can be like, "Wow, that's so cool." Yeah. It's like many, many years ago when I was a young shaver of a lad. Yeah. Uh, my dad knew Cosgrove and Hall because they all used to work at Granada together at one time so yeah they went off and formed Cosgrove Hall you know the animation studio and he managed to wangle a bit of a, a tour for me I was like about I think 12 11 or 12 or something no I was about 15 yeah. or 16 he managed to wrangle a bit of a tour he kept in touch with them and he, he said you know can my lad come around He's like, yeah, bring him around so and it was just me and I got to go on this like guided tour of Cosgrove and Hall in Charlton when it was still there before it burned down. You know, I got to go in all the different departments. I got to look at closely and fiddle with all the all the models and stuff for Wind in the Willows because that's when they were making Wind in the Willows. Mm -hmm. So I went into the puppet shop and was looking at all the all the puppets that were in various stages of production. Some were just armatures and some were full puppets. I had the they had the big Toad Hall model there, and I was looking at that and messing about with it. All these different things and all the animation. I was watching, I was talking to all the artists. I was watching a guy painting a background for a yeah. Duckula episode. And it was the one where Duckula goes to the Louvre Museum. If you ever watched that, I've seen the guy painting that one of those backgrounds. Uh, Count Duckula. Uh, yeah. And, but anyway, I did this guided tour. But the point of the story is, it was awesome for me. But my brother actually took me there. He drove me there. Yeah. And for some reason, I don't know why. I said, right, we're going in. He said, yeah, I'll, I'll stay in the car. You go and have your tour. I don't think he realised, first of all, that it would take about three hours. Mm. But also, I think he regretted that, that he'd never come. I don't know why he didn't come in with me. He said, no. it's, it's your little tour. You go But I think he regretted that. Uh, and maybe it was nothing of any interest to him, but I think he regretted not saying he would stay outside. Not because it was like three hours of just being sat outside, but also because he, he, never got, he would never have the chance again. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sarah Jane says to all in chat, what shall we talk about as Fox hasn't stopped talking yet? Yeah. yeah I wasn't doing all the talking. Colin was talking as well. That would be an ecumenical matter. I was actually <coughs> I was, I was doing some. Don't be such a coward. 
Me? I am, <clears throat> mate. I'm a total wimp, mate. Yeah. I've seen what she's done to Panzer, mate. He's in North Korea. I ain't going there. Hey, if you want kimchi, then there's North Korea's a place to go. He's sitting there keeping Kim Jong and his own company, mate. Yeah. His little rock hammer. Rock hammer. Sounds like a really crap villain. Yeah, rock hammer. Yeah, 1977 villain. Hmm. Death Wish 95 starring uh, Charles Bronson and Rock Hammer. I've just remembered, you ever used to watch Sledgehammer? Yes. Spoof Cop Show. Yeah. I just remembered yeah, that. About the same, same time as Police Squad used yeah. to be on, innit? Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. Had Adam in the uh, had Adam Ant in it for a while. Yeah. It's, it's a character. Sledgehammer. Hammers for sledges. Mm -hmm. I shall have a look at chat in a moment. When I've... Uh, how you doing, buddy? I've moved on to my turret now. Uh, I'm underneath at the moment, mate. I'm fine, mate. Are you underneath the arch, you? Eh? Are you underneath the arch? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I like the vibrato there. Very good. He was impressed, wouldn't you? I know, I like a nice bit of vibrato. Vibrato, even. I can't say it, but I like it. Yeah. Ross is saying to Sarah Jane, how's the weather near you, Sarah Jane? See, they're trying to think of other things to talk about. Well, they're clever. They are clever. Thing is, it's Sarah Jane's fault because she mentioned the thing, and that's what sent me off on oh, that conversation. Oh, I wouldn't have said that. If she hadn't oh, said oh. that, then I wouldn't have talked about that, would I? See, so about I you am know, not that brave. Carpe uh, diem and all that. So I'm uh, afraid you've you've been hoisted by your own petard, there, Sarah Jane. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Balls of steel, mate. Balls of steel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's almost like Ted Crilly kicking that bishop up the arse. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to step back and not not get involved. <laughs> anyway. Yes. I shall, say, I shall then say to the chat, what do you want us to talk about? Or if you want Colin yeah. to talk more, what do you want Colin to talk about? Yeah. As long as it's not religion what? or politics. What do you want to know? Ask us anything. Yeah, this is an ask us anything thing, so you can ask Colin any question you want. And Fox will answer everything you need to answer, uh, be answered. I can't help it. But, uh, mate, it works, doesn't it, at the end of the mm. day? The thing is, we both, we both don't like dead air, do we? In no. Street? No. That's we the do ramble a bit, so apologies for that, folks. That's the thing that if you if you do live streams you'll you'll learn very quickly the worst thing you can do is have dead air where just nothing's being said because it's boring yeah, for your audience air. yeah I had dead air it was up my nose tasted like peas once i like peas i had dead air now i've got no air i had a friend once you mm. liked peas. liar <laughs> so going to hell yeah Never be explained. Never be explained. <laughs> so yeah, so you you kind of learn to be allergic to dead air and silence spots, and it just becomes a kind of habit. And I know I talk too much, and I, and I never shut up, but it's just more a habit now out of doing solo streams for so long. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, this is why I I avoid solo streams because. If I get engrossed in something, I actually forget the audience is there and <laughs> I'm live. Yeah. You notice that on the frolic. You'll go, you're right there, mate. You're quiet. And it's because I'm in the zone. And you do forget. Whereas, obviously, you coming from a solo stream background, you're more conscious of that than I am. Yeah. Because it's when you're doing it by yourself, it's always about keeping the audience entertained. And if you're hard at work painting and saying nothing, well... Yeah. It's a webcam, so they can't really see what you're doing that well anyway. So yeah. why are they sticking around? This is around? why on a lot of these Educate Investor streams, I'll let you do your demo in. I do very little. And then when I'm off air, on the Sunday evening, I catch up with all the bits and pieces that I would have been doing whilst we was on air. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. Except I need to see the results at the end of the show, so... I need to now see you've you just been now you've just been awkward. I need to see you working out workings out, young lady. 
Yeah, you know what happened the last time you asked my workings out? You got 35 photos sent you, and you was like, you are mad. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Show me all <laughs> the things you've been doing. It's like, you did ask. Yeah. And then you're like, your brain's a very scary place to be. I wish I was there. Mm -hmm. My brain terrifies me. Never mind everybody else. I've always been chatty. I don't know. I'm just one of those people. Yeah, but it's, it's a, it's a self-confidence thing as well, though, isn't it? Let's be honest. I don't know. We've said this before. You have your, your on-screen persona. Uh, that we, that we, you know, where we're doing the shows, and yet off air, you know, as, as Duncan would say, yeah, we're really not that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we're different people when we're not on a stream. Because again, if Sarah if, Jane says, I'll talk to Colin, not Fox, as I don't want a three million word essay back. Ooh. Well, you know what? That's absolutely fine. I've because at the end of the day, if you're watching my video, again. if you uh... if you're watching my video. I'm getting me ad revenue, so I'm more than so I happy. I won't be able to interact with him on the stream. I take it you can still hear us live. Uh, have you fallen out again? Message to let him know. Can you hear probably me? Not aware, and he's probably chatting away to me without yep. realising I can't. And you can't hear me. So let's just chuck him a message. Uh, can't hear you, dude. Send that through. Uh, just let. I'll just reboot him. One sec. Uh, no, because Streamlabs has frozen. Okay, the stream might fall over for a second, folks, but give me a second. We might be all right. Hang on. I need to kill Streamlabs and start it again. Okay. I hope I'm live. Okay, can you see me and hear me? Can you see me and hear me now? Am I live to you? Am I coming in your ear? I hopefully should be, I think. <clears throat> Let me try this, check this. La 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 la. La 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 la. Okay, we should still be live, I think. You're live. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Let me see if I can get Colin back. Oh, the joys of technology. Do, 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 do. One second, folks. We should be back to normal in a moment. Uh... Okay, one second, folks. I apologise for this, it's all technical rubbish. Right, there we go. Hopefully, Colin will be back with us in a moment. Check something quickly. I'm just playing with buttons. Ignore me for a minute. Uh... Aha, right, we are there. Can you hear me, young lady? Yeah, I can hear you, mate. There we go. Yeah, it was Streamlabs fell over again. Isn't that weird, yeah. It might say if that uh, the new link, link yeah. yeah. Well, that I mean, weird. if it does it again. My, my solution was simply, I, I, 
I've, I've kicked her out for some reason, thinking that might fix it to get you back in again. What I, but what I did was I just basically shut down Streamlabs and reopened it. And yeah. in that in that ten or fifteen seconds, the stream didn't stop because YouTube gives you about ten or fifteen seconds. Yeah. So if it does it again, just let me know, and I'll just shut down Streamlabs and restart. And yeah. it's a bit of a pain for the viewers, but at least it keeps us going. Yeah. Bit strange, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to go to back to Streamyard because it's garbage. But yeah. no, like I said to you, you know, at the end of the day, if it's going to keep keep dropping your stream, then. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, we're done. Right. Uh, Ninja, Scale Model Ninja's in. Oh, uh, mate. He says, everybody's saying, yeah, we can see and hear you. Thank you, Panzer Cat and Sarah Jane, for the update. Uh, so, Fox, what's the best way to eat a Jaffa cake? All at one go. Box at a time. Uh, and not sharing them, as Paul Lewis says. Yes, not sharing them is a good one. Uh, Paul Lewis is in as well. He says, belly roast beef with all the trimmings in about an hour. Bench 112th model factory hero Ferrari 315S. Berridge lemonade now, beer later. He's a secret lemonade. Yeah. He's a secret, oh yeah, God. He's a secret lemonade drinker. I think. Yeah. Do you know what I saw the other day on the, on the internet? What's that? Um, it, do you remember the old soft mints advert with Mr. Soft? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. South. I was like, wow, I've not seen that for a long time. I've <laughs> not seen that for donkey's years. Won't you tell me why the world in which you're living is so strange? <laughs> God, that was a great advert. We're back now, folks. Yay. Yeah, anyone doing an MFH kit is like, yeah. Yeah. One of those. I will get one eventually. Yes. Yes, I could hear that you couldn't hear me because you said I can't hear I can't hear Fox or whatever. So I knew, but I was like, hang on, how do I tell how do I tell you what I'm gonna do? Mm. So I can still hear you fine, it's just yeah. Yeah, that's why I touched you a message. It's yes. Like... Most thank yous. Dee 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 dee. Mm. It is a new it is a new option a new thing from Streamlabs though, so maybe it's just prone to bugs with certain setups, I don't know. Maybe it'll get better in time. Hope so, because like I say, we we used it Friday, and you've watched it back, and it came out really well, didn't it? Yeah. Ah. Uh, it's just my computer being rubbish again, as usual. It yeah, seem. it's weird. Uh, it's weird when I'm a guest in yours, how it keeps up and down in the audio. That is weird. Yeah. That must just be a thing where, as a guest, I'm over a web browser rather than, yeah. You know what I mean? I think that's a browser issue myself. Yeah, possibly. Well, could be. What I'll do next time is... What, you're in Edge, aren't you? Yeah. I think next time what I'll do is I'll have Edge open and paste a link into that when I join yours as a guest so we're both on the same browser for that stream. I don't know if that'll make a difference, but it's worth a try. I don't think it'll make one no. iota of a difference, no. but you never know. Worth a try. I mean, I only use Edge for this because it's smaller than Chrome, basically. It's yeah, I don't really, use Chrome at all. Uh, I use Chrome... <clears throat> excuse me. I use Chrome for me browsing, but I use Edge for when I'm doing streaming. Anything I need to do, like when we're using StreamYard, purely because it's got a smaller footprint than yeah. Chrome in resources. Yeah, no, I find Chrome's too clunky, mate. No, I like Chrome. I'm used to it now. I've been using it for years. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Soft. Like, too resource hungry. It's like oh, yeah I, d yeah. I don't use it for anything where I'm trying to do lots of other things as well. Like, say, streaming. If I need a, a browser open for streaming, I'll try and use Edge because it's smaller, but... Other than that, it's my, my, my Get Netscape Navigator, mate. That's what it's all Yay. about. Yay! With Ask Jeeves yeah. built with the uh, Ask Jeeves built in. Yeah, Ask Jeeves boot built in, mate. IOL disc. Get hold of that. I also find I also use Edge when I'm watching video content. Uh, again, because it's a smaller resource hog, so my fan isn't quite as loud when I'm watching yeah. a video. Yeah, normally if I'm watching video, I'm doing it through Firefox, and if I'm streaming, it's through Opera. 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 Yeah. Not Opera, Opera, the one who talks to people, but Opera, the browser. Yes. Oh, you mean Opera, the one that promotes promotes pseudoscience and bullshit? Op opera, win, 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 Yeah, the pointless celebrity that promotes pseudoscience yeah. and dangerous bullshit. Yeah, I think we're on about the same one. Yeah, the one that, the one that gave Dr. Oz a platform in his day selling crap. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't stand Oprah Winfrey for that. 
Yeah, I'm being paid millions of dollars, but I'll sell it anyway. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Anyway, how are you doing sure. with your tank, dude? I'm doing fine and dandy, mate. Look, it's a tank. Hang on, I've got messenger open. Let me close that. La, 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 I've not got you on full screen. Let me uh, open my projector. How will you like? Well, no, I've not, I've not got on projector. Hang on. Yeah. Just, uh, put that on performance yeah. mode. Put that over there. Put you on cop guest. There you go. Let's have a look. There you go. Ooh, you're full screen now. Ooh. There you go. Have a bit of that. What's the bit you've been doing today so far? The, the I bottom. have been doing a bit underneath there. Have you been fettling with, your, fettling with your bottom? Yeah. And then just going round and touching up a few other bits. I'm taking me time today. I'm just Good going life. round and nitpicking bits that I might have missed. So yeah. Yeah, a few scratches on the skull there. Re mm -hmm. Redone the ones on the front just to bring them out a little bit more because they was a bit faded. Mm -hmm. Same down there. I don't know whether that's coming through all right. Yeah, yeah. A few scratches up the side there. Big old gouge across that canister. Yeah, I noticed that. That's quite good. I like that one. Bit, bits and bobs around here. Bits of chippage. But yeah, good, dude. And then we got a cool. bit more on the old turret there. That looks like a, Roll a wrongly, out the wrong, turret. Wrong, wrongly placed widge there. Sorry for the <laughs> angle of that. Slightly yeah, excited. Bit, bit more underneath there where it's been scrapey, scrapey. Mm -hmm. I'm working through mine in a minute. Yeah. So that's kind of all I'm doing. I'm just going around re retouching little bits. Looking at bits, going, oh, that could do with a bit more on there, or da da da, da you yeah. Know? yeah. Are you going around touching little bits, are you? Reapplying paint in areas I may have missed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, la, 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 la. I, I saw what you was trying to do. I do nothing. So, yeah, I'm not getting too carried away. <laughs> Famous, <laughs> last... <laughs> Famous last words. Bless you, my on. child. Tell you what I haven't done. I haven't had a looky loo what it looks like with turret in place. Mm. Well, I can't do that because it took me forever to get this turret into the clampy handle. Yeah, I'm lucky. See, I've got my blue tack one that I can put said turret on, and then I've got clampy handle there because me, me dude's in the other one. Well, the problem I made for myself was that I super glued the turret to a normal 32 mil base. Oh, you didn't? Well, no, like like you glue anything to a base temporarily to paint it. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of super glue, so I can I can handle it without handling the turret, because I can't put yeah. the turret in the clamp. But the problem is that it's only lightly super glued, so every time I tried to put it in the clamp, it would ping off the base. So it took me ages to get this thing in there. Yeah. Well, my clamp's got the other geezer in there. I painted the other day, so I just yeah. thought I'll use that one with the blue tap bit in it. Yeah. But it just took me ages to get because I haven't got any way to hold it, so I had to really gingerly try and get the base in there yeah so it ain't coming off this base anytime soon i'll keep meaning to send you some of these i'll have i'll print you a couple of these off and bung them in your printer box because they great. just screw on the handle see like that oh, lovely. So i'll have a bit of that you then. can you've got your clampy base yeah there that's got the dude on but that one sits in there and then i've got another one that's got the magnet on it oh magnets how do they work nice uh, easy you just lift it up and no and it's, it a, it's a joke about oh sorry <laughs> it's, it's a joke never mind <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a meme dear boy yeah <laughs> magnets how do they work well actually we'll... <laughs> yeah, you lift that bit up and it, yeah, there you go so yeah. yeah i'll print you some of them off mate and then cool. they come in handy because when you've got stuff like that that you're using your clamp for you can just bung that to one side and mm -hmm. let me know how many monies you want I heard a word then. Yeah, so don't be so stupid, bloody monies. Let me know if you want monies for them. This is, you're using up your resin and stuff. You just want one of them paint racks, don't you? What with the oh, what with the gears and the cogs and shit? The gears, the steampunk cogs and all of it. Yeah, yeah I've got nowhere to put one. That's the downside. I have actually got a paint rack that was very kindly uh, sent to me, uh, which I need to build. Uh, and I, I'm blanking on who sent it to me. I'll forget the name in a second. Uh, it was sent to me by one of my followers who does CNC wood stuff and I need to assemble it and he sent it to me in like May and I still not got around to filming it yet so I must do oh, that. What do you like? It's like a it's not like it's not a paint rack, it's just a brush rack, you know, like for keeping your brushes while you're working. Like a little it's like this thing, but it's I use that at the minute, but I've got this wooden one. So this is handy for when I've got my brushes in use and I want to put them there while they're being clean so yeah. they're facing down. But yeah. I've got a pile of brushes on the bench there which are just sitting there as a pile of brushes which are my yeah. active brushes. Yeah. And it uh, was 
Let me tell you who it was. It was sent to me by yeah. uh, Mr. Bob Darbalina, paging Mr. Darbalina. Mr. No, I can't, it's not there. It's I, I can't check right now. I'd have to Absolutely. Open the I'm just sitting reading what Stefan's been putting up. He says he's been away for the keyboard for a little while. Uh, just heard your conversation about Elf versus Obby like Colin. He's got the MS and diabetes comment. Mm -hmm. at a much level, much milder level so far. He hasn't done much building since I got the diagnosis, but must say watching Colin's builds has been very inspiring, urging me to give it a go again. Yep. Just have to go all feel hard in, dig me way through all the layers of rubbish that's piled up around the bench. All I can say to that, Stefan, mate, there's, there's going to be days when it's kicking your bum, mate. Do what I do, operate on good, better, best. On a good day you're going to only be able to do a bit of video editing. On a better day, you might be able to do a bit of painting or glue a few bits together. And on your best day, you'll have the airbrush out, you'll be doing photo edits. I always have several kits on the go, some that need a simple task doing, some that need more advanced skills. So if you're having a bit of a crummy day or an uh day, you've always got something that you can do at the bench where you feel you've been productive. That's what works for me, mate. Mm -hmm. And it ain't the end of the world, mate. It is what it is. You can't change it. Like me, I had to, uh, you know, I've had issues and that lately with it. It happens. But, you know, it could be worse. Yeah. And that's where the gaming's coming in for you, isn't it, soon? Because. Uh, yeah, for me, that's... it's my cognitive brain talking to my hands thing. Yeah. But it'll also be your, you've got your good, you've got your, what was it, good? Good, better, best. Good, better, best. But when it's not even good, that's when you can do your gaming. If you're on a yeah. not even good day, then yeah. well, you can pick up a controller. Well, it's, can't like, you? it's like last week, you know, it was like, I'm not able to get to the bed. I'll just do a bit of CAD design. Yeah. Because I had still, the key with, with the MS, Steph, and you've probably been told this by your MS nurse, you've got to keep your brain positively occupied because otherwise you get depressed. And when you get depressed, yeah. So you've got you've got to keep the brain stimulated, mate, and and that's when it comes in. You know, back me a message sometime. I'll go through it with you off air because it is, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, it works for me, mate. And um, have a go, mate. Yeah, big hugs. Yeah, definitely, mate. But another one I was told uh, about Fox was mm. the for the hand-eye coordination. Yeah, and by the MS no, she said, get yourself a set of juggling balls. Oh, yeah. I went, I went, what? She got herself a set of juggling balls, you know, the old Aki Sack beanbag ones. I oh, said, yeah. Why? She said, why? She said, because start with one ball, throwing it left to right hand. She said, then try the two. She said, then try the three. She said, because it's a great way of getting your hands, your brain, and everything talking together. Mm. And I went, oh, simple idea. She went, yeah, it's good. What about um, sleight of hand magic tricks? Yeah, anything, anything. That kind that, of stuff. Yeah, you know, I have uh, several. I don't, Jeff will relate to this because he's a guitarist. I have two or three different sets of finger strengtheners that guitarists use, and mm -hmm. it's basically like looks like a load of trumpet no, tubes, you know. That yeah. you, and they're all different spring tensions, and I sit and I I exercise my fingers with them, and yeah. I, I, little things like that because it stops you. I do a lot of Rubik's cubes, as you know, Fox. Oh I'm yeah, just clattering around with one. I think the just only... keep your brain going and your dexterity, mate. The only human being I know in the world that still does Rubik's cubes. Yeah, but it's a great way of getting your brain talking to each other because you're remembering the algorithms. You're exercising the hands and you're looking at what you're doing to match the colours, so it, it works. See, this is why I sucked at Ruby's Cube, because it's maths and I don't do maths. Sarah Jane says I'm a great inspiration to many. I try to be. I, I get criticised heavily for it. People will criticise, saying, oh, you know, I was on about this. No, if someone's going through it and they're not sure, if I can help them in a way that makes their quality of life better, I don't think I should have to apologise. Yeah, no, when you're dealing with something like MS or anything like that that's serious, <laughs> having other yeah. people who are going through it is, is an absolute lifesaver. Yeah, I'm not looking for violins and sympathy or yeah. playing a victim or anything like that. I'm trying to help people get through life because, you know. Yeah. 
I've been battling MS since my mid twenties. So, although I did think when you, I did think when you read Sarah Jane's comment out, Sarah Jane was saying that she'd been a great inspiration to me. I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, but yeah, no, it's it's one of those things that it's like something like that. If if you know, if you find someone that's going through the same thing and you can help them, then you have to do it. You can't just keep quiet. Well, this is it. I mean. You don't. You don't. You don't sit there going, "Oh, poor me! I'm. Oh, I'm having a bad day." No, oh, no you I don't. don't sit you, there. You, I can't do that because I've got MS. I just go, despite my MS, I'm going to have a go at that. Yeah. I'm going to go good, better, best, and see what I. Yeah. Can. You don't do poor me rubbish. You just. No, the, I'm the, not into that. The reality of it is, you don't. You, you rarely ever mention it anyway, unless it's specifically you're saying, "I haven't done this because," or, yeah. in this case, yeah. like with Stefan, I'll, be, I'll be honest. You know, yeah. as a depressive. My depressive side has been 10 times worse over the last decade as mm. my MS has progressed. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I went from, you know, being the bloke up and down the ladder doing roofing and things like that to using sticks to get about, struggling to get upstairs, struggling, you know what I mean, yeah. day to day stuff. Yeah. Getting overtaken on a path by an 80-year-old granny with a shopping trolley, you know. <laughs> yeah. it, it, is, it is frustrating. Well, you're not you're not the kind of person that just goes on about it all the time and milks it for for the only no. re, the only reason you ever mention it is because it comes up in conversation because you know you yes. may you may have said well I didn't do any painting yesterday because or whatever or yeah, I choke about it I didn't want that paintbrush as it's gone yeah. flying across the room because you've got to humour it Stefan yeah. will relate to this or you'll or you'll you know? talk you'll talk about it because like in this case someone in the chat is going through the same thing and therefore it's relevant so you're not yeah. there's plenty of people that have like things like serious problems and they just go on about them all the time and you're like i don't care because no. people are yeah, coming no, to you no. to get away from their problems they don't need yeah. your problems as well i can't change it you know yeah. ms is you know ms you're doing life without parole is the easiest way of describing it yeah if that sounds gloomy i'm actually being quite flippant about it because that's the truth of the matter it's not going away so stop whining about it it's like life without parole um, but the prison feels great with it. yeah yeah because I actually, and this is going to sound quite perverse or, or bizarre, but I actually think having MS has made me a more grounded and rounded person hmm. because you do develop this, I wouldn't say compassion as much, but you know what I mean? Like, say, for instance, Stefan, I can relate to what he's going through yeah. and I can relate to the ups, the downs, the highs, the low, but also the fear and apprehensive ha apprehension mm -hmm. of what lies ahead for him. Yeah. Because, you know, you've got your career, you've got your mortgage, you've got your responsibilities, all of that. I relate to, and that messes with your mental health. And that's the battle. The MS itself isn't the biggest battle. It's your own mind. Yeah. As your body begins to fail you, you begin to overanalyze it and stress over it. And you can't, you can't afford to. Yeah, I you... reach out to people like Fox and Dave and say, "Yeah, my carcass is kicking my ass," and they they know how to stimulate me and get me back yeah. because they know me deep. Yeah, I basically send him off to Forge World. <laughs> well, it is difficult, but yeah. Any... Yeah. Chip, 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 chip. I'm on my under sea. I'm on my seemingly underbottom area at the minute. Oh, are you 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 weathering your <laughs> you weathering your bottom, dear? You? Yes, I'm in the seamy underbelly of my turret. Yeah, I kind of, I didn't go mad, mad underneath. I didn't go mad, he says. No, there's a bit of clattery where bricks rubble, and that's gone bumpity bump, bumpity bump, trundle, trundle, trundle. Under there. By bricks and rubble, you mean all the orcs it's run over? Yeah, all the orcs. Oh, yeah, it could be a bit of blood and gore. I might put a grot underneath one yeah. of the tracks. There's a great meme. There's a great meme of a, a Bane Blade commander, a Death Corps Bane Blade commander, sat in the turret of a Bane Blade. Yeah. Uh, and on the gun other side is the gunner, and the commander says, "Hands, look, track lubricant." As they come upon like a swathe of enemies. Well, that's good. I like that, Stefan. He says, "I record old vinyls that aren't available on CD or digitally," and then he edits out all the crackles and pops. Very mm. time-consuming, but it's also very satisfying. There you yeah. go. It's a way of relaxing, mate. Yeah. Good for you. Mm -hmm. um, coming off the subject now, don't suffer alone. You can reach out anytime, mate. My email's on the YouTube. YouTube. You can message me if you're struggling and you just need a friendly chat. More than happy, mate. Did you just suck your brush then? 
No, I don't. I don't suck my brushes, mate. I just went. All oh, right. I thought you were like doing a, a, a brush suck or something, and it maybe went no, a bit wrong. I'm not a brush licker, mate. Because why, why are you not a brush licker? Because uh, I just don't do it, mate. Why? Um, I suppose it goes back from when I used to do spraying. Now, I did, you know, terps or anything like that. I just decided. Well, yeah, if you're working with lacquers and stuff, yeah, you don't. Really yeah, do. you know. So I just, I just don't do it, mate. It's not a thing for me. You're um, a brush licker, then. That's what you're. Saying. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I do it. I do it um, to get rid of excess water. When I've dipped my brush in the water to get the paint off, I always lick the brush to get any excess off. If I'm still going to be painting with it. Yeah. But also, I'll lick it to keep a fine point on it. Mm. If I can. Yeah, see, so I just bung it in the water and then run it across the wet palette and give it a twist. What about the brush? <laughs> yeah, or I could, I could just put it in the fun palette like that. Oh, thumb. You know you want to. Thumb. Mine a bit dark and orange. Why am I a bit dark and orange? Let me just adjust my settings a little bit. That's my thumb palette. And here is one freshly printed. That is Foxy's fun palette. Ooh, is that for me? Is your name Fox? Ooh, could there be. There you go. Yeah. Who's asking? <laughs> you know, along with a set and soul holder, several <gasps> pot holders. Is there, uh, is there, is there, one, any, is there anything secret one, in there? One that does the pots with lids. Oh. I always said you were a burst bait. It's not true what they say about you. I always said you were a good lad. Oh, I'm, your, I'm a good lad now. Yeah, I? your best mate, because you know. Oh, right. Is there, uh, anything, is there also, any, anything secret in there I don't know about? Also printed you the Mark V glue holder, Ooh. which has got the reinforced, or glue holder, Citadel oh. pot holder, which has got the reinforced spine of goodness. Ooh. Are you going to include instructions? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. Mine's still going, you know. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, I know, but I, I've made a design modification. Um, are we to assume that at some point you bust your own? Yeah, you've also got one of them. Hang on, let me... What's it? What's it? Let me put you full screen. Let me put you full screen. Hang on so I can see. Oh, set and soul. Yeah. Free bit of advertising on the front there. I like that. I like your advertising. Very good. Yeah, you taught me well, mate. It's got set and soul with the brush, the brushes, so you can have two different brushes. Lovely. Oh. I'll look after you, don't I? Is that a special dropped on the floor version? Cool. Yeah, that's the special drops on the floor. Showed you that. Didn't that's I? how you know pop. it's a, that's how you know it's a genuine fester because it's been dropped on the floor. Pot with lid. Pot with lid. Oh, it's the special one for the little lid. pot with lid. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. So I'll look after you, don't I? You do. It's not true what they say about you. Well, well, it probably um, is, actually. It probably but... is, actually, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sarah Jane says, Carl, can you print full bottles of Malibu? I'll have a good go for you. Paul Lewis says, YouTube. Absolutely. Did you want one of them fun palettes as well? Oh, look at the state of that. Um... Do you need a big one, or are you all right? Make sure what's to me. Uh, no, I think I'm because I'd only probably use that for things like oil paints, and I've got a little palette for oil yeah. paints. So, but no, that's really light. I like that though. That's like a little mini Bob Ross job, isn't it? It is. I like Bob Ross. Uh, Sarah Jane says, Colin, I agree. I knew a girl who lost a leg in her teens. She won the Duke of Edinburgh's award, learnt to fly, parachute, etc. Unbelievable what she did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. PMA, positive mental attitude. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's what works for me. Good, better, best. <clears throat> yep. Uh, right. Still chipping me bottom. Are you chipping your bottom? Yeah, I've just spotted a couple of chips there that I need to add. <gasps> I'm sure it's like a, a, a setting or a location in Midsummer Murders. Yeah, it's, it's Johnny Thompson from Chipping Bottom. Chipping Bottom is a place, isn't it? I don't know. No, we're chipping that bottom. Chipping Norton. Chipping Norton's a place. Yeah. Chipping Bottom would uh, get you arrested, wouldn't it? I don't know, possibly. Depends what you're into, I suppose. I say, let's go to chipping bottom. And I like the word bottom. It's just a good word. It's just a. It's a kind of. Well, it's going a... to chip <clears throat> bottom with me. What possibly could go wrong? <laughs> the funny thing is, right? For most of the most of the unfortunate body parts in the human body, all the names for them, either like correct or slang, are either offensive or just unpleasant. But mm. the one the one part of the body. 
that has a not unpleasant name is the bottom because it's the bottom it's just it's yeah. bottom it just it's a nice word it just you can get away with it it doesn't sound offensive it's when you say it yeah. there's no there's no innocent inoffensive word for intimate feminine area or gentleman sausage so yeah that doesn't sound a bit ropey so but you know yeah it takes the edge off anything you say if you know what i mean he fell over onto his bottom Ooh, but we all sit there and go <laughs> he's a bottom that is a delightful bottom you have there madam it's just a pleasant word it's just like right. i like that word bottom I worry about you. Yeah, you, you should do. You are, you are addicted to Bluey, so... I'm, I am. Hey, you'll be once you've watched more than one episode, trust me. <laughs> I thought, I'd better watch an episode, because he is going to nag me, and it will get mentioned Sunday if I don't. So. There was an episode the other day I watched, and this is the kind of... like They put little Easter eggs in them that make that make no sense to kids, and even I had to go and look it up. There was, I won't say too much, but there was something happening. Uh, and Bluey and, ba and um, Bingo and their dad Bandit were sat on a park bench talking in the background. And in the foreground, there's like a low wall and a... And a they're in a public park. There's like a low wall and, a, and a, a refuse bin, a waste paper bin, whatever, you know, a bin. Yeah. Like you get on the street. And this character walks past, gives the bin a quick glance, and then walks off. <clears throat> and this is in the foreground, while you're focusing on the background action. And I'm like... Hang on a minute. So I went back and watched it again, and it's like, you know... The action's happening in the in the distance, and you're watching that. And this guy just walks past, looks in the bin, what, and just a quick glance at the bin of that. What? Why would they go to all the trouble of animating that? What? That just it's nothing to do with what's happening in the story or anything like that. It's just a random thing. Yeah. And it's like, why would they put some random background action in the foreground? So I went to look it up, and it turns out apparently, about five episodes later, that same character, who's not a no, you're just a random background character. Um, appears in the di in the very far distance uh, as a homeless guy sat on the street and some other character who you've met before in a previous episode this is way off in the distance just kind of walks past and gives him some money and walks off like he's just given some money to a homeless person uh -huh. and it's like there's no reason at all for them to put this guy in it three episodes before in the fork it's like I like the little things that you like it's like kids wouldn't even notice that so yeah, it's like if you if you watch Bluey as an adult, it's definitely not a kids' cartoon. It's I don't know. It's more like a it's more like a, a, a an adult sitcom type thing, a little bit that the kids can watch. Uh, Jeff says belly belated deep fried chicken blobs left over from yesterday. Oh, chicken dinner. blobs! Yum, he says. That reminds me of the. Uh, the Nautilus dive videos where well, some of the crews will have little phrases they use like they'll say what's that blob down there and the camera will be like right go for blob go for blob zoom in yeah uh -huh. blobbage go for blob uh, Panzer says chicken blobs I am unacquainted with that part of the chicken's anatomy mm. I think the chicken's probably a bit confused by it as well <laughs> yeah one of the phrases the pilots use on Nautilus is uh, <laughs> They started saying it. I think somebody said it wrong and it took it took root, but they've got this phrase basically when you go full speed with the Nautilus ROV, they say, yeah. give it, give it, what was it? Full beans ahead. Oh, and I'm like, beans. I like the full beans ahead. <laughs> I like that. I'll steal that. I'll use that all the time now. Yeah. Absolutely. Hmm. You've got to steal a good name, mate. Yep, full beans ahead. Right, I think I'm getting coming up to close. I'm doing done with the turret. I might actually get the chipping, this part of the chipping finished today. Ooh, what are you doing right now? Me, I'm cleaning my paintbrush, mate. Have you finished your chipping? No, I've got oh. a couple of bits, couple of bits uh, more to do. Not an awful lot left to do on it. Yeah, yeah I'm getting towards it's the end of lipstick. it. Lipstick, lipstick, and mascara with it. Yep. The, bob, the bobbin says you've still got me full screen, Fox. Oh crap! Yep. Yeah. Thank you. It's quite difficult now because Colin can't see anything that you guys yeah, can see I or that I can see. I haven't works. got the uh, buttons of Trent turning it off like I used to when he used to forget. Yes. Yeah, and Colin can't. Unless he opens up the YouTube and watches the video at the same time, he can't actually see anything that you guys are seeing. Yeah. So it's just it's just me and him in a hangout kind of thing for him. So, yes. 
thank you for that that's why we always ask is audio and video fine it's because mm -hmm. yeah using this this way of doing things we don't actually see what each other's seeing if that makes sense yeah i'm not happy about streamlabs falling over and killing your audio that's kind of annoying me a bit yeah, it's if, one if, of them if it's that unless it's just something else, i don't know it could be something else completely but i don't know yeah i mean i didn't have it on my stream earlier no. and certainly didn't have it friday so no. and i noticed it when i went into mine that the audio had dropped and it was like where was i last in the stream and i thought well it was when we was doing a test wasn't it mm. Uh, yes, I mean it could be just what I could say when Streamlabs hangs in the same way that it used to kill off my stream deck would stop working yes. so but I don't know why Streamlabs falls over yeah. it's probably well, my fault it usually is yeah I mean I've been sitting here going through all my set and nothing's changed you know the system is exactly the same as it always is but you know right. me I always always check me setting check your bits I've got no control over audio output on the stream because that's your hosting. So mm -hmm. I take it everyone can hear us clearly and see us clearly. So as long as they can and we're not massively quiet, then yeah. it could well be that the audio is going up and down just for us, but it's not actually going up and down for the end user. Yeah. How's Colin's audio been? Has it been nice and stable? It's not been like going okay. suddenly really quiet yeah. and then really loud again or anything? Exactly. We both move because, around, and obviously we'll go quiet when we move away from our microphones. But it's not been like going. Yeah. You know, our you know audio, both of us, our audio meters are going up and down, up and down, up and down. But as long as it's streaming out to you mm. guys, okay, then it might just be that Streamyard is updating it so that it can output a more consistent yeah. uh, audio. I don't know. I mean, push comes to shove. If if doing this is unreliable at my end it may just be a case of you know get you to actually do the streaming on a sort of warhammer sunday i'll give you my stream key and overlays and i've got it all in i am you've got it all you got, got it all, all your yeah. overlays and stream yeah. keys from when mum was in hospital yeah i was so doing your warhammer stream i might have changed channel. since then i don't know but yeah i mean that's the other option is if it comes to the crunch then just get you to do the buttons as it were on warhammer yeah, sunday because it. it makes no difference fine. to the viewer We'll figure it out. Anyway, let's not uh, bother the viewers. Panzer says, audio and video is fine on both your feeds. Ooh. Right. It sounds like Slobs is adjusting our audio inputs for itself so that it can output a balanced audio for the end user. That's Could be. what I'm thinking. Could be. Did that sound technical? That sounded a bit too intelligent for me. Man. I'm, I'm going to have to read words to understand right. that. Right, let's just say that the little... The little Wumpa Lumpers may have got the sound goblin, oh, yeah. rolled it up and down the slope, and where he got bashed, he let out a parp <laughs> so that it can all be recorded by slobs. How's that? Cool. Sound? That works for me. That's another thing with Bluey that you'll like. There's lots of farting. Yeah, I notice. Yeah. yeah. There, was a, there was a rather adorable behind-the-scenes video where they were talking to the sound guy. And I was like, how do you make all these sounds with Bluey? And here we do running water, and here we do this. And then it, it, then he says, and then there are some sounds, and it shows it shows Bandit farting, and they go, yeah, we're not going to show you how we make those. <laughs> 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 right, I think I've done my turret. Uh, That's all right. Sarah Jane says, woo, NASCAR time. Take care, all. Woo. No worries. Take care, no Sarah, worries, Jane. Sarah Jane. Thank you for Take coming care, in darling. and insulting me. I, I would miss it if it wasn't there. <laughs> the only reason I come in the Warhammer Sunday is so that Sarah Jane can just call you names. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in, though. Enjoy your NASCAR. People driving in circles. Oh. Was it left lock or right lock? I can't quite remember. Left lock. There you go. It's like Italian tank racing. Just make sure the track goes backwards. Let's see what I did there. Is it? Is it too soon? It's been 70 years, 80 years. I don't know. Oh, no, I'll be pressed. I'll be pressed. Oh, mate, I'm always impressed. But I grew up in the 1970s where when it was a joke about any kind of war, the Italians were always the butt of the joke. Yeah. It's, it's always the Italians that were the... Yeah. Uh, uh, right, what are we doing? Uh, let's have a quick chat. Uh, uh, pardon ooh. me. Ooh, that was good. Yeep. Uh, no, no, no. There's a, there's a train stop between Manchester and Glossop called Broadbottom. Like for your information, says so Space Hamster. Broad Bottom. There's also a place called Rams Bottom. Rams Bottom. Rams Bottom. 
my age. <laughs> Paul Lewis says, my so reputation. <laughs> Paul Lewis says, so the less said about Cockermouth, the better. Yeah. <laughs> ah, la, 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 la. There's a place down in Cornwall called Wet Wang. Wet Raid. There is a place called Peniston, <laughs> which is spelt stone, as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Edward Leonard's in. Wish you luck. There you go. In fact, in fact, to be different today, I'm not going to give him a squishy. I'm going to give him a shrimp. I'm going to give him a shrimp. You ready? You ready? Shrimp. Oh, that's good. That's so good. <laughs> Go on, what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at the speed of that bloody squishy. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a panic. I'm easily pleased. You are, aren't you? Uh, anyway, Edward says, Belly going to be pork roast and all the trimmings. Ooh, Bench just finished oh, the cat right. on a scooter. We assume that's a model, not an actual cat on an actual scooter. Uh, yeah, it? I think it's a model, yeah. Yeah, you've not like literally just killed the cat or something. Yeah, I'm going to fin- I'm, always wins. I'm going to finish the cat. Yeah, it's a cat and it's on a scooter. What ball? Scooter, catch a rat! One day you'll play Borderlands. You'll understand that reference. <laughs> is that another one on my list of yeah. things to do? Is yeah. It? Well, that Borderlands is a great game that me and you can play co-op one day when you've got an Xbox. Because it's a game that you can play single player, you can play solo, but it's actually designed for up to four player co-op, and it's oh, it's, right. yeah. it's fun and silly and nonsense, and it's 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 just as much fun playing it solo, but four player co-op is just it adds to it because it's all the same missions. It's just four of you up to up to four of you. Uh, I'm just down the other end of the room because I need to pick that off of there. Because I forgot me hatch. What was that, what? Me hatch. Oh, a turret. You're, you're a turret hatch. I actually took a photograph of my hatch before we started so I can do a before and after the brown chipping. <sighs> brown chipping on the ring. La, you see what I'm just like a circle, you see it's a ring. La, la, la moving on. Okay. You're just not impressed, God. are you? you no, I'm that. not. God help me. Please help me. All the work I put in and I get nothing back for it. Psh. What did you expect for that? I don't know, something. Now I do all the cooking, all the cleaning, all the washing around this house and nobody gives me any gratitude. <laughs> Cinderella here, chained to the bleeding sink. You know what I mean? Oh, lamakins. I also <laughs> can't quite reach this to paint it because there's a dirty great big camera in the way. I may have made a grievous error with the camera position. Yeah. But I'll get this done, not, and then the four... Not as bad as doing the stomper, though. The stompers are yeah. such a big build. Yeah, remind me Getting never to do... Getting them on shot is difficult, isn't remind it? Remind me never to do a stomper ever again. At least not on a live stream. Yeah, it's a challenge, isn't it, mate? Mm-hmm. And Bane Blade's half enough, I don't know, because that's big, but... Stomper. Oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I think I'm going to get on with uh, Insane Blade and Wallet. Bloody hell. Yeah, you shot yourself in the ass with that one, mate. Yeah. Well, then again, you're filming that. It's not live stream, so we're filming it. It's easier because exactly. you can yeah. set up a shot. And if you're painting a bit, you can set up a shot for that bit. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to break it down into manageable sections. Break it down. <laughs> Sorry. No, it was good. I'm impressed. Uh, what's Paul D. Tomazzo says? Just look for Paul D. Tomazzo. There you go. He's created an account on Scale Mates. Oh, oh another one. Days, mate. Another one. Yeah, have you sent me a mate request through of your poll? Yep, send me one. It's Guru Fox for me. Have a look. Got a burp coming up. I can feel it. Do, 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 do. do you know, I've got no idea what I'm having for dinner. No. Not a snossage of an idea.
What are you having for your dinner, buddy? Uh, roast pork. <gasps> roast pork. Is that a three in the morning job? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know me so well. Yes. You, well, have you been up like a couple of days now, haven't you? So you should be ready for sleep at some point. Couple of days, mate. You know me. Yep. Absolute ball ache, but nothing you can do about it. No. Nope. Work with what you've got. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm on scale, mates, looking Ooh. for Paul D. Tomazzo. As Admit you it. said in the chat, look for Paul D. Tomazzo. So I'm doing Admit it, you're on scale, mates, and you're updating your stash because it's one of those things that will now take over your life. <laughs> uh, no, my stash is fully up to date. Mate. How long did that take you, weeks? No, I did it in stages of 10, and uh, it took me a week. Mm. Now, all I do now when I buy a kit is it goes straight on scale, mate. Yeah. Not done. See, I say that every time I buy a paint, a Games Workshop paint, and then I forget to put it in the app, and then I'm suddenly fine. I've got to get all my paints out and go through them all again. Because I is special. Yeah. I are idiot. I must, I'm not quite decided what colour to paint in the interior of this tank yet, as in the interior of the hatch. Don't know if yeah, it's, it's one it's of them, a green isn't it? Or a, like a green, a chrome zinc chromate green. Or an off-white colour, which never looks great, but often is the case for tanks. Tankularity! That's the lid painted. Uh, what am I doing now? Let's have a look at this thing here. Uh, oh, itch. Scratch, scratch, itch. Ooh. Right, so I've got three little guns, three little... No, not saying that. Three oh, little guns good. to do with a little tiny bit of chipping on, and then I think I'm done. The brown is complete. And I think we can probably call it a show then, before we start. Yeah, I shall uh, chip my guns later on. I'm just doing the inside of my hatch at the moment. What colour are you going to do it? Well, I'm just, I'm just putting the uh, light grey on at the moment, Ooh. just getting the... Uh, Outline of the chips down. Oh, sorry. I thought I see what you mean. I thought you meant you actually. Me? I thought you meant painting the actual inside part of the hatch, not the. As in whatever. I think I'll color. just keep it. I think I'll just keep it the same as the outside. To be honest with you, because yeah. with the hatch up, you wouldn't want it a fluorescent red, would you? Because it's going to become a bullet target, isn't it? You know. Yeah. Whereas if it's the same color as the tank, it's. Mind you, a Lehman Russ is the size of the house, so it's going to stick yeah. out. They are going to spot it. Can't exactly hide it behind a wheelie bin, can you? <laughs> no. How, quick, hide behind that really thin bush. What? But earlier when I said, oh, I'll just put a grot underneath, it's like, yeah, a grot underneath a Lehman Russ is going to be like a micro dot. Yeah, right? it's like a pee under a... Well, yeah. I mean, like a grot under a Lehman Russ, isn't it, basically? Let's just be honest. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I was not, just thinking of, like, you know, you look at tanks and they tend to have those white interiors or green interiors, I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah, cream weiss. Yeah, cream vice. That's the word I was looking for that I could not remember. Which I can probably use like me. I can probably use like screaming skull or something for that if I need to. I've got a pot of that behind me. Have you? Cream bags. Doesn't help me, but it's good to know. Yeah, it helps you no end, mate, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Does not help my end at all. Now I don't know which bits of the weapons I'm gonna paint lead belt to yet, so I'm just chipping wherever I've put sponge chips for now. And if it means that later on I go over some of the sponge chip bits, over the chipped bits with... I actually haven't got that much chipping on my guns yet. No, I've not done Mind a lot. Mind you, though, they are the other end of the man cave, so... Yeah, no. Nah. They probably won't. I didn't do much, but I don't know. I'm not sure which bits will be grey and which won't, so I've just assumed that they're all grey for now, and then if I end up painting over some of the chips later, we'll figure it out. It's not a problem. I've only got a little bit of chipping. Little bit of yeah, chipping. Yeah, I'm only going to be sort of um, perhaps a few scratches around the edges and a bit of detritus here and there. But You like that word, don't you? Detritus. I do like a bit of detritus, mate. Detritus. 
Gubbins and detritus. Two of my favourite words. Is it because it sounds like a big posh word? Like it sounds like Latin? Ah. I don't know, I don't know why I say it a lot. It's like I say absolutely a lot and all. Absolutely. I don't know why. It's uh, not that, a conscious thing. It's that just, is, yeah. when you say absolutely, if you've ever done a call centre job, you'll have been told you've been taught this, but that is what is called a positive listening noise. Yeah. It's basically uh, an involuntary tick, as it were, a verbal tick that humans do as a social creature. It's a way that we can say to someone who's talking to us, I'm listening to what you're saying, and it is going in, but I may not, you may not think I am, but I am. It's just a way of saying, please keep yeah. talking, I'm not, I'm not ignoring you, I am listening to you. Yeah. Like, you know, when people sit there and go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing. I think, I think you use it as a positive listening noise. I use it as an acknowledgement that I'm paying attention. Yeah. We learned all about positive listening noises in the old days when we were learning how to be call centre goons. The first the first lesson was, leave your soul in this basket. You'll get it back when you ever leave the company. Yeah. Uh, and the second lesson was how to pretend like you give a shit. <laughs> When you don't, <laughs> call centres, they're not good. Oh, no. Absolutely. At least telecoms call centres are not good. I can't speak for other call centres. Uh, but you know what's not, you know what is good? What's that, mate? Bottoms. 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 Bottoms is good. Bottoms are always good. Well. I like bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so wrong. I had a bottom once. That was it, yeah. I had a bottle once. Tasted like peas. <laughs> so I liked it. I like, I like peas. Do, 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 peas! What was that old spitting image sketch with the? Uh, it was the it was the guy that was the leader of Sinn Fein before everybody became friendly and everything. Jerry Adams That's and Martin it. McGuinness. Yeah, it was Jerry Adams there at the dinner table. Was it Jerry Adams that couldn't speak because he wasn't allowed to be broadcast? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It used to be an actor's voice, didn't it? Yeah, and they had uh, they had Jerry Adams there in black and white with no voice, and they had I think it was Martin McGuinness there. Yeah. And I think somebody said they were they were either in a restaurant or something. <laughs> Somebody said to Martin McGuinness, would you like some peas? And he's like, there'd be no peas in our time. <laughs> uh, that was before the Good Friday Agreement, obviously. Yeah. There'd be no peas in our time. But yeah, you used to always be an actor, didn't it? Uh, yeah, and they'd, they'd like blank him out and shade him out. You couldn't. Yeah. I don't know whether they did that with his passport, whether it was just a pixelated picture. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it weird, though, trying to explain to people that weren't around during the Troubles what the Troubles was? Yeah, although I don't know why we call it the Troubles the when... Of... Yeah. I why still do... remember the Ring of Steel in London. Yeah, it's like, why don't we just call it a civil war, which is what it was? Pretty much and what it the was. The Troubles it? makes it sound very like an inconvenience, whereas it was yeah. it was literally a civil war. Absolutely. One part <laughs> of the country no. revolting yeah. against a different part of the country for various reasons is technically a civil yeah. war. The troubles. Yeah. Uh, ah, a fox's chores are never delegated, says Paul Lewis. Uh, Space Hamster says about an hour and a half later. Uh, oh yeah, bench. I'm painting the spikes on my shock jump dragster's wheels. Ooh, I'm very seriously questioning my life choices. That yeah. was a good bit of time in there, actually, because we are that bad with the chat. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Stefan Lass says belly. Pizza, fillet of pork, mushrooms, jalapenos, onion, taco sauce, and garlic. Ooh. Bench nice. substitute, crackle cleaning, and 18-minute eight, S Express Mega Mix. Three minutes, ten seconds done so far. Late 80s dance gold. God, S Express. S Express. Express. That's as much as I can do without triggering the copyright. Uh, yeah, I was just going to do that. Yeah, but I, I don't know because it's going yeah. right. La, 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 la. You know, because if you take the hyphen out, it's S Express. Yeah. That's, are... And that's a rude word. You knew yeah. that, did you know that? No, is it? Here's, take the hyphen out of S Express and what do you get? Uh, yeah. yeah. 
You can get sexy times. Sexy times. I worry about you. You really do need to get out. Of course, there. if you've got a list, it's your least favourite band. Ash Express! Who would you like to listen to? Don't ask. <laughs> Anyone out there that's got a lisp, I do apologise. Lateral lisp, anyway. Lateral lisp. My friend's got a lateral lisp. Hey. I had a lisp once. <laughs> it left me. You see up my nose? <laughs> yeah. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've done dear. me chipping. <laughs> well, I've done me brown chips, anyway. Yeah, I've uh, just doing the last bit on my act. Yes. H. I shall show the people, the good people, what I've done. I think I've done it all anyway. I probably have missed a bit now, and I'll remember at the last minute. Uh, I've only got me uh, me guns to do. Guns out. Let me put it. myself full screen, and I'll show people. Uh, I have chipolated the turret of happiness. That's got all the all the grey chips and the brown chips now. Now you have to remember with all these chips that me and Col have done, it looks weird right now. It doesn't look too stark because it's on a dark grey background, but it looks weird right now because it looks really cartoony. But, like I've said many times before, once we've done all the other weathering and there'll be like, we'll be doing oil paints to suggest leached rust and there'll be like other things to suggest where rust has streaked down the side and there'll be streaking and stuff to go anyway. That will all blend away and it'll look more natural because at, at, by the time it's finished, there'll be areas where you've got a big fat rust patch and the area around it will look slightly tinted with a hint of rust. But right now you've just got a grey surface and a brown splob, so it looks really weird, but it will all come together. We've got the, the body there, you see, we've done that one. Today I've done the side piece. Ooh, nice side piece. I like a little oh, side that's piece. A, that's a nice side piece. I had the side piece once. I had side of peas. Side of peas. <laughs> I, didn't, uh. I didn't do much underneath because I'm going to be covering it. I did the side bits here, but I didn't do the... Because that's going to be covered in dirt anyway, so I just cut my losses. I've done. I've got a nice hatch. Oh. I was looking at it in Borderlands at the minute. Hello, Hatch. Hello, Hatch. And then we've got the weapons here. And again, I've not. I've just painted them all and done, done chips all over all of them. Because I don't know which bits are going to be what colour yet. So I'll just assume they're all grey for now. And then we can chip them later. So that's where I am up to. I shall unpopulate. You're good. You are good. I like that. Yes. I shall let you finish yours before I show you yours. You're on screen. I'm all right. I'm right. Now you can do your last bits. Now if you're doing last bits. Yes, I'll yeah. do my guns later because the daddy I've read in bed cave. My earphones aren't long enough to reach. Have oh, you not got bigger ears? Oh. No. I've done a bit around the uh, side. You're full the full screen now. You're full screen now. Go there for you it. Go. A bit down the skull as you can see. A gouge of gougeness. Gouge. Yeah. Came around the front. I've not done anything here other than a tiny single rust hole because we got the old stripe Yeah, do. we could do that next Wanna week. Want to do that next week? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got chip ins across the deck all there. Uh, let's undo the windy pins. <laughs> we got loads of chippage underneath. Cole, Cole. you got a big hole, mate. you got a big hole. Yeah, I've got, I've got a little... Uh, Escape hatch that I'm going to glue over that when it's finished, and then I should just paint it. That's only when it's got worms. The worms can get out. Yeah, uh, you know I might have a pair of grot feet poking out. Oh yeah. But yeah, so we got the front there. Iron can. Dun, 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 dun. Iron can. Can you? Yeah, got the side there. Got another skull there. Scratches mm -hmm. and shizzle. Rust around the door. Same round the back there. Yes. Along the side of the grating and all that. Same round, same round the disc. It's very grating. Scratch, <laughs> scr scratch, yeah, scratches on the top there, as as taught by he who does. Yeah, scratches. I like the fact you've got less less rusty chips on the on the sort of top areas. That's quite nice. I just yeah. went, I just got carried away and did rust on everything. So and then we've got a bit of the old turret going on, a bit oh, of damage is. around the old mantle there because stuff would have hit that foot foot traffic up and across the surfaces, mm -hmm. and then more so underneath where rubbish may have happened, where they've had stuff get caught under its rump yep. and it's turned and gone greaty, greaty, greaty kins. Yeah, greaty kins. So, yeah. So all in all, we've got a bit around the aerials, a bit of damage, a bit of uh, edge eye lighting where the paint's been rubbed off a bit. You what, know, are the, so. what are the two things on the mantle? You've got like a little, like little tiny white dots on either side of the turret. What is that? That's decals, mate. That's skulls. Oh, right. I can't, I can't quite see from here. I was like, what is that? Yeah, they're I tell tiny if it was a... little skull decals, mate. Cool. I couldn't tell if it was like a, an object or a shape or a decal. No, they are miniature versions of, of that. that. Good man. 
Skulls, innit? Skulls, innit? Skulls. Skulls. So that's that's kind of what's happened there. And then we got a bit around the old Hatchy King uh, there, around the edges. Yeah. And a bit on the inside where stuff may have been dinged against the edges, boulders thrown or whatever. I Look at the dingularity. Oh, yeah. That's where I'm at with that bad boy. Cool. Awesome. We've done some good work today. Well, we've done some work. Well, we, we, we did some, yeah. We did something. Don't know what. I'm liking the fact that we're managing to fill three hours with uh, like 20 minutes of work quite nicely. Yeah, going... Are you impressed that I did about eight <coughs> chips in three hours? I'm impressed that we both finished at the same time, actually. It was quite good for us. You told me to slow down. So I, I know. And you did because you're, you're a good girl. You listen to your dad. Yeah. To your like, Uncle Fox. Yeah, yeah. You just need to slow down. I'm like, really? Can I get any slower? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. You have to get slower because I do a lot more talking. Gordon so I... says evening, folks. Yeah, yeah. Hello, the news slow, Hey, Gordon. Welcome, Hugh. Or even Hugh, even. Uh, Dominique Cuckoo is in, says good evening. Uh, Welcome, Dominique. Fox's audio again, but not to worry. We're coming off air anyway. Uh, oh, you can't hear me. Ah. Uh, um, yes, welcome, Dominique. I'll tell, tell you what. Wait, there. I'll try. I'll try restarting everything again. Don't go anywhere, folks. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere at all. Refresh my end. Yeah. Right, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now, mate. Right, I think I've got the routine down pat. Let's just have a quick look. Uh, make sure we are still streaming. La, la, la. One second, folks. Sorry about that. Um... Uh, yeah, it will be coming on screen imminently, I think, because it's still yeah. I'm... yeah, we're still live. Yeah, basically what I have to do is shut down Streamlabs and restart it. We're going to Task Manager and make sure it fully shuts down. It's... It seems to be when Streamlabs Streamyards fall, Stream Labs falls over. Yeah, it's definitely an issue your end then, mate. Because yeah. what I'm going to try doing is not having. Um, I'll try without having a projector going. See if that just reduces the hassle somewhat. Yeah, it just seems odd, doesn't it? No, uh, it's actually still using a lot of CPU. Just... Yeah. yeah. It it does seem that this is a bit more CPU intensive than just streaming out one camera. Yeah. So it's guess... Friday went fine, didn't it? So yeah. I think basically Streamyards is doing stream, stream Labs. I hope they've got the same name. So I think Stream Labs is doing a lot Slobs. more work. Yeah, Slobs yeah. is doing a lot more work with the collab cam, and I think that's that's because yeah. it's a single cam, it's doing less. So, well, I'll, I'll not yeah, have me no I'll not have me preview window open. I'll just keep it there. We just there we go. That might work. Yeah, play it back and see what see how it went, mate. But everyone was yeah. saying audio and video seemed uh, at the same level, so I think the audio yeah. adjustments um, definitely. Slobs. Uh, everybody's saying goodbye. We're not gone yet. Are we still here? Uh, are you still? Are you still? Uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm still there. I can hear you. Yeah, no, I'm just hoping people haven't left yet because we're still going. <laughs> I did say I'll be back in a minute. Uh, yes, yeah, so Dominic Cuckoo and um, uh, Hugh Gordon have just come in. So thank you for coming in. We're actually going in a little minute, but there you go. Yeah. Uh, I assume we're still Hello, live. Mate. Uh, oh, yeah, I've got it on the screen. I've been trying to interject and say we're still live. Mate. Love, good, love, uh, lovely, even lovely. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I reckon next week, I reckon next week, I reckon we can do some striping next week. Yeah, why not? I reckon... At least then, like I say, it's done then, isn't it? We can then carry on weathering around it, and it's not it's not a case of we've still got it to do, is it? Yeah, I reckon it's stripey, stripey time. For those, if you don't know, the stripe's going to be here on this front section here. It's just going to be a nice uh, white and red stripe, I think. Stefan says, it sounded like you were wrapping up. We are, actually, but I, I didn't intend on wrapping up at that exact moment. <laughs> I had to restart everything. So I can, we can do that next time. Bit of stripey going on. I've not decided yeah, if there's going to be not? two red stripes and a white stripe or two white stripes and a red stripe. I don't know yet. Uh, whatever you decide, mate. I don't know. I don't know which one looks what more works? awesome. Uh, oh, oh hello. That was good. I like that. That was impressive, wasn't it? That was that. Was <laughs> Ooh. That was a good spider pick as well. Mm. So, yeah, I think that'll do us, though. Um, anything else you want to add, my dear? 
No, no, I'm fine and dandy, oh mate. Like Ooh. I say, you know, it's it's moving on to the next, the next stage, the next the stage of the process, isn't it? But it Ooh. seems to be coming along all right. Yeah, I was most impressed and heartened that you were you'd taken the chipping technique that I've been showing you and using it on your stomper on Friday. That was quite good. Oh yeah, I was like, oh, I, I did that. I, I learned him that. <laughs> yeah, why not? It's got to be done, mate. Yeah. So that's the beauty why with not? that. That's the beauty with this chipping method, though. It really just is a case of you can do as little as much as you want, and it's just down to trying to be as delicate as possible. That's it. Well, this is it. You can apply it. You can apply it as an additional technique to what you're doing, and that's the key, isn't it? At the yeah. end of the day. And then, if you're doing a model that's a much larger scale, like one twelfth or one twenty fourth vehicle or something, you can mm. you can be a bit more slippy sloppy because you'll have bigger chips on that because it's a larger scale, yeah. smaller scale. Even. Exactly. Yeah. So. Mm. But you're having fun there so far. Are you enjoying? I it am, so far? mate. Good lad. I am. It's it's nice and chill. Mate. Yeah, I'm en I'm enjoying I'm enjoying filling the foldy parts of your brain with words and numbers. Yeah, well, it gets back to the good, better, best, doesn't it? Not every day you can sit there and manhandle an airbrush, whereas a paintbrush, you know, you can yeah. sit and just do something, can't you? And the fact that you're doing orcs as a as a thing anyway means you've got months and months and months worth of chipping that you can do when you're having a bad day. Oh, ding dong, There'll mate. There'll always yeah, be someone to chip. I'm looking at the amount of builds I've got in primer. Yeah. Ready, ready to go. And builds that I had paused where I was waiting to get the educating fester sort of sort. So I could then progress them paint jobs to that next stage. Mm. You know? So I've got all of them builds to go well, back to. So it's quite a lot. And that's the thing. If you've got the shakes one day, then, you know, that doesn't really affect sponge chipping, does it? So... Oh, no, if I've got the shakes, it comes in really handy for <laughs> scratch, scratches and chips, mate. Yeah. Because you've got to hand like a bloody woodpecker, ain't you? It's like, oh, yeah. I need a console team to set a bullet holes. <laughs> yeah, da -da -da -da. I suppose, you know, getting the, getting the brown chips inside the light chips, that might be a bit more tricky, but... Yeah. People go, God, how did you manage to get so many chips go lock across there like that? <laughs> well, a debilitating illness will do that for you. <laughs> yeah, I did it on a day where I had Edward Spanner hands, mate, and it went really well. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, you've got so many orc things to do. That's like months and months of those yeah. of that to do. So you always can have a Absolutely. You can have a laugh with it. That's the thing, because like you said, you know, my shakes are are sometimes to my advantage when it comes to this sort of thing. So mm. It can work in a positive way, mate. Yeah, I mean, look at Van Gogh. He was half deaf. <laughs> he painted well. Yeah, he, he, absolutely. That was terrible. I'll move on from that one. Ah, that's all right, mate. I, <laughs> yeah, you know. I, it worked in I my say? head till I said it out in words, and it was like, yeah, that wasn't good at all. That was instant regret, wasn't it? It was. It was instant regret. It was like I just yeah. managed to Schadenfreude myself. I don't quite know how you do that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's going to do us for today. So, big, massive thank you and hugs to Festa, my, as ever, uh, equal sidekick. and No, not a sidekick, co-host. Always my pleasure, I mustn't say mate, sidekick, because you know you're not a sidekick. We're equal. Hey, mate, this. I don't mind. Uh, We're equal in this. You need me to be, mate. It's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, yes, big thank you to you for joining me, as ever. Uh, That's right, mate. Don't forget, of course, we're not uh, we're not back tomorrow with E-Models Monday, because it's not E-Models Monday tomorrow. It's uh, the week off Monday. Yeah, um, it's week off. Yeah, I do need to at some point in the next few days uh, go through the next five packs of my Star Wars um, encyclopedia that I've received from Fan Home. So I'm probably going to do like a 10 or 15 minute live show rather than film it and take like a whole day to do it. It's just showing you some books. I'll probably do a quick 10 or 15 minute live show for patrons and channel members in the next few days. Um, and then once it's finished streaming, I'll just make it available to everybody else. So do keep your eye open on the um, uh, YouTube member community page thing uh, and if you're if you're a patron keep an eye on Patreon I'll post up everywhere else anyway it'll only be like a 10 or 15 minute thing like look at this book isn't it nice and the next book yeah it won't be that but do come along if you if you want to uh, and then hopefully I'll get some other bits and bobs done this week I'll try and do some more filming of the Age of Darkness set uh, see if we can get something done on there but uh, yeah that's going to do us for today don't forget of course thank you to everyone that's been watching if you're not a patron or a channel member and you want to help keep this channel alive then please do consider becoming one you can simply go to patreon.com forward slash model making guru and become a channel patron or you can press the join button underneath any of my youtube content to become a channel member you'll be keeping the channel alive and you'll be literally putting food on my table because i do this for a living so big thank you do have a think about it if not then just make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell as always and don't forget best of 67's workshop
Uh, you can uh, support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Festa67's workshop. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash at Festa67. Or you can join and become a channel member on me channel by clicking the join button and access to the Zoom 24-7 will be yours. Mm, you didn't. You weren't expecting that way. I was like... Eh. I wasn't. I was totally distracted by your waffle there, mate, and I might have zoned out. I don't think distracted is the word. I think nullified, maybe. Yeah, I'm like, he's not paused for a breath yet. He's still going. He's still yeah. going. I'm impressed with this. This is yeah. deep sea diver underwater breath holding technique here, mate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's going to do us. <clears throat> I shall go away and think about what to have for dinner. Uh, what are your plans for this evening, dear? Anything? I am going to sit and chill because I've been sat in this man cave since midday, mate. Yeah, so, so you need to go get out of that chair and go yeah, do something else. I need to go now and retire for the day because my day's work is my day's work. Done. My day's work is done. My work here is done. So I need to go and put the legs up. I'm going to rewatch the morning's MotoGP because it was a brilliant race and I want to see it again. Mm -hmm. And I won't oh, yeah. watch it at all. But there you go. I'll probably go and watch some Deep Space Nine or some Blue. Well, it's something. funny the missus laughs at me when I'm watching it because there are times where I'm leant forward on the chair and I may get the old knee out. As the, and and you, are you leaning left and right as well? Uh, yeah, I do it when she's driving me to the hospital. When she turns a corner, I instinctively lean into the corner. I get the impression that you're, you're the kind of gamer that when you're playing a video game with a controller... And you're playing any kind of driving, you're going to be like leaning with the controller like this. I th Absolutely, some people will do, do that. Mate. They I lean. used to do that on PlayStation with the Moto GP games, mate. Yeah. I'd get my knee down and yeah. Yeah, you do that with the controller. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know yeah. what you like. Right, but that's going to do is I'll let you go off and get chilled out. Uh, until next time, we will see you all very soon. If you don't see me before, then you'll see me on the Friday Frolic anyway on Comments Channel. But maybe you'll see me before then. But until then, yeah. I shall say thank you very much for putting up with all the technical bullshit today. It may just be the nature of the state of affairs, or we'll sort something out for next time. But until then, yeah. thank you very much to all of you. Uh, take care of yourselves. Go make something awesome. Go be awesome. You already are, but go be awesome anyway. And until next time, I shall say... Adios, amoebas. Oh, you cheap tarts!